So uh, if anyone's out there and you'd like to listen by telephone, uh, you would dial star 67, uh, 669-900-9128. And at the prompt, you would enter the meeting ID, which is 812-4620-2390. Um, And then if you would like to speak during the public comment period, you press star nine. Um, You'll be added to the speaker queue and then unmuted when it's your your turn. Um, And all this information is on um, the Town of Fairfax website. So in case you didn't write all that down, please do go to the website uh, where there's also the Zoom link that you can click into. Okay. So um, tonight is a very special night, and we have two hours for uh, this presentation and input session. I'm going to frame it. I did write some things out because there's a lot of information that I would like people to have to frame the evening so we can make the most effective use of our time. So first, we called this a a special town council meeting um, in preparation for the updated county order on June 1st where we anticipate that the state and county will allow some form of outdoor dining in June, but we do not know if it's June 1st, June 8th, or June 15th. Could be later since it all depends on the COVID-19 data. There will be loosening of the orders to allow for the opening of restaurant outdoor dining, and then a more gradual uh, loosening of regulations for retail businesses. Uh, Listening to Matt Willis report to the Board of Supervisors yesterday, He reported that the reopening will be, uh, his words, gradual and sequential and will be accompanied by monitoring and modifying in real time. Um, I would like to request that everyone please use marinrecovers.com to get your public health updates and details on the three phase recovery uh, for business, uh, for businesses and their opening guidelines. It's being updated and there are uh, subgroups, industry groups, public health people, and that is your go-to site, marinrecovers.com. Um, while this presentation was noticed as a special town council meeting, I want everyone to understand that that was to allow for all council members to participate and not create any Brown Act issues. We will not be discussing any specific policies this evening. Staff will take notes and consider all public input in making recommendations to the council at our June 3rd town council meeting, our regularly scheduled town council meeting. And at that time, we'll consider specific policies and processes to streamline policies, regulations on temp- on, on all on a temporary basis. Um, These policies will focus on allowing restaurants and retailers to use public areas, such as on-street parking, as well as private parking lots, outdoor areas for such uses as outdoor dining or sidewalk sales and or curbside pickup. So our job as a town, both local government and the collective of businesses and engaged public is at this time to find a way to safely use our downtown spaces both public and private, in order to support business operations while making sure that they can operate safely. This means in adherence to the physical distancing requirements. Our Bolinas Road sidewalks are six feet wide, and that does not allow for people to walk past one another on the sidewalk. Regardless of what we decide to do, there is no way our businesses will succeed if people don't feel safe shopping and dining downtown. It's our obligation to work together Uh, to make sure that we give them every opportunity to recover. I'd like to just give a brief uh, fiscal context to this so that you know that for fiscal year 2021, we estimate a 20% net reduction in total town sales tax. So we're assuming some level of recovery since this is for an entire year, July 1, 2020 through June 30th, 2021. Second point is that retail and food, that's restaurants and grocery categories, represent over 55% of the sales tax revenue generated in town. And the third point to remember, and this is to me the one that's most salient, is that 15% of the town's operating budget is sales tax generated. 
So according to Matt Willis on the uh, report that he made to the Board of Supervisors, it takes a thousand particles of the coronavirus to infect someone. These particles are delivered by droplets and normal breathing can also deliver the particles. So all focus at this time at the county level and at the state level is on use of outdoor spaces where transmission potential is greatly reduced. And this goes for both recreation and for dining and shopping. The key to our work here tonight is to remember that we are looking for temporary, temporary solutions to create safe spacing as an emergency response to support the survival of our town businesses. We're hoping that tonight is a solution oriented and very general discussion. This evening we'll primarily focus on our downtown businesses, but at the town council meeting on this coming Wednesday, that's June 3rd at 7 p.m., uh, we'll be considering policies to expedite businesses use of their own private outdoor spaces. This presentation is a general overview of the concept and how it has worked, how it has worked in other communities and how it can work in Fairfax. So with that, I'm gonna frame the presentation as businesses need increased numbers of customers and customers won't shop or dine if there is no space to feel safe in. So how can we all work together to solve this puzzle? Um, and with that, I'd like to introduce our presenter uh, and uh, John Bella is a local- uh -oh. Adam, I'm sorry, yes. point of order. Um, yes. you, you call the meeting to order and uh, the usual agenda items. Okay, excellent. And then, so then I'll have to start over. I'm, I'm just- <laughs> yeah, do it all again, no. Okay, so I, uh, now that we've uh, had that brief introduction, I'd like to call the meeting officially to order um, with a roll call, please. Um, Sure. Council Member Hellman? Council Member Kohler? Here. Council Member Reed? Here. Vice Mayor Ackerman? Here. And Mayor Goddard? I am here. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So uh, the agenda item for the evening. I'm sorry, if you might have a motion for the approval of the agenda and the affidavit of posting also. Okay. I'll move approval of the agenda and the affidavit of posting. I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion read and a second uh, Kohler. All those in favor? I think Aye. we have to do roll call. Oh. oh. All right, you guys are stumping me all over the place. Okay, I'll do the roll call. Uh, Council Member Hellman. Here, aye. <laughs> uh, Council Member Reed. Aye. Council Member Kohler. Aye. Uh, Vice Mayor Ackerman? Aye. Okay, and me, myself, and I. Aye. <laughs> All right, so um, we can move forward now. Any other points of order, Michelle? No, thank you, Mayor. Okay, so I'm gonna go forward with introducing John Bella. He's a local resident, um, and John is a public space designer. He combines a background in art, science, and environmental design to create vibrant, dynamic, and resilient urban human habitats. John invented Parking Day in San Francisco and is responsible for much of the parklet innovation all over the world. Uh, John and uh, his cohort, or I should say probably colleague and friend, um, Alex Schuldiner contacted me two weeks ago. And from that conversation, this evolved as an opportunity for us to get inspired together as a community and see what we can do to pull out all the stops and make sure our businesses survive downtown. So with that, I'm going to hand it off to you. And for the rest, just, just to uh, for, let you all know how we're going to run this evening is John's going to give us a 25 minute presentation. Um, at the end of that 25 minutes, I'm going to ask that council members, uh, if you have burning questions, meaning you just need some clarification, um, we're just going to do some quick five minutes, if that's enough questions. From there, John can respond to our questions and then I'm gonna open it up to the public because I actually don't know how many people are, oh, 63 people are here, which is wonderful. But I want people to have a chance to talk. This is two hours. Uh, again, protocol wise, um, members of the public, we're gonna ask your comments to stay to three minutes and we'll be noting everything that you guys bring to us um, and so that we can consider everything when we, uh, when we have 
uh, take up the agenda item on the June 3rd uh, council agenda. Okay, so from there, uh, just to reiterate, no decisions to be made tonight. This is a presentation public input session. John, take it away. Thank you so much. Uh, and thanks for that great framing uh, and introduction. You really covered a lot in, in you know, five minutes of the kind of critical issues. And uh, I'm gonna switch to sharing screen, but before I jump off the video, just wanted to say hello to May mayor and council members and all neighbors joining us tonight. And thank you for being part of this meeting. And thank you, uh, Mayor Goddard, for the invitation to uh, to be here and share some ideas that hopefully can help uh, help us get toward that reopening date. So I'm going to share my screen now. <clears throat> okay. So, all right. Um. Um. So uh, the the title of my presentation is is a uh, Fairfax Town Center reimagining streets to aid economic recovery and public safety. I think Mayor Goddard well framed the sort of challenges in front of us. Uh, and really the idea is to build on what entities like Fairfax Open for Business are already doing in terms of, you know, uh, creative ways to serve customers while obeying the shelter in place order. And then as the mayor framed it to kind of uh, really get us positioned for this reopening. As, as I understand it, and, and as the, the kind of mayor framed it as well, um, you know, part of the challenge is that narrow sidewalks downtown make it difficult for people to adhere to social distancing guidelines and safely use public space. Um, local retailers already challenged by change, changing consumer patterns are now under severe pressure due to COVID closures. As lockdown orders ease and, and businesses reopen, ensuring sufficient space for customers and employees remains a critical need. A potential solution to aid in economic recovery, a, a number of cities around the, the county and around the state and around the world are reimagining streets uh, as places for outdoor seating, allowing restaurants to make up for lost indoor seating capacity uh, with outside tables. And the idea is that perhaps Fairfax can explore the creation of some kind of pedestrian commercial zone to accommodate both pedestrian movement and also help local businesses reopen while adhering to the social distancing guidelines, which are going to change over time. I'm John, I'm a, I'm a partner and director of Gale San Francisco, also as the mayor mentioned, founder of a group called Rebar and creator of Parking Day. But I live here in Fairfax with my family. I'm, I'm, not, a, I'm not representing anyone tonight but myself. And I'm here as a volunteer because I, you know, I'm new to this community, but I, but I love this community and I love the downtown and I really have enjoyed being a patron of local businesses and I wanna see them survive. And so that's why I'm putting in time and energy on this presentation. Um, Mayor mentioned the rebar parklets, you know, started in San Francisco. Now they're all over the, the country, all over the world. Uh, Santa Rosa and, you know, Novato has a great parklet program. Calistoga, Placerville. Um, so it's, it's been a kind of a movement in terms of, uh, you know, different ways of thinking about parking spaces to serve and really enhance local businesses. Parklets have grown so much because they're good for business. It's pretty clear. There's been a pretty, pretty clear kind of return on the investment there. Uh, in my role as an urban designer at Gell, we're, a, we're an urban design firm uh, based in Copenhagen, San Francisco, and New York. We're both social scientists, anthropologists, sociologists, and designers and architects. We're uh, kind of informed by Jan Gell's research, Danish urbanist. Uh, we work all over the world. Our focus is people. We really care about public life. In, in cities and we think about public life as the social activity that takes place in everyday public spaces and streets and parks and plazas and spaces in between buildings. You know, we, we try to design environments to accommodate sort of the human scale and uh, observation, data, ethnographic research is the, at the core of what we do. We do observational analysis and survey work and digital surveys and we have a database of public life data in terms of people moving and staying throughout the world that we can compare with other places. And we use this to inform design decision making. Uh, so we're an evidence-based design firm. You know, our approach is this idea of measure, test, refine. So you get some data. You use that data and information to do some kind of temporary uh, uh, design solution. And then you learn from that temporary move to inform what's next. I think this is very much aligned with the idea of adapting and responding to the changing um, health code requirements over the next couple of months. Uh, a couple examples of this approach the before and after in Denver, and the data we found, you know, when we transformed a, a not well used street, a huge increase in the number of people walking, biking. This was also a shared public way that allows vehicular access. Uh, 
parklet, temporary parklets on the Sunset Strip in West Hollywood, a 45% increase in people sitting and using and patronizing local businesses and a significant increase in sense of safety. I wanted to uh, share an example uh, from a, a, another smaller, smallish town in California called Lancaster Boulevard. They decided to do kind of a street upgrade. This is about long-term change. It's not super relevant to our conversation, but I want to point out that streetscape, you know, public realm investments have a return on investment. So, you know, through this kind of upgrade, creating more space for local businesses, they saw a 70% decrease in pedestrian collisions you know, major kind of private sector investment, 400 new businesses open, 800 new jobs, and sales tax revenue grew by 26%. The point here is that, you know, well-designed streets are good for the economy and good for business. Our company, Gell, did an analysis of public life uh, during COVID-19. We started to do intercept surveys and observational analysis. Of course, we found, just like here in Fairfax, local meeting places are far more important. If you're not, if we're not able to drive to Mount Tam, you know, we're going to Deer Park. And I've certainly felt that, you know, in Deer Park on the weekends, it's filled with people, which is both wonderful and a little scary, you know, with the, the amount of people there. Uh, we also found in our research that there's more elders uh, using the public realm as opposed to pre-COVID times. And our sense is that that has to do with, you know, people who are either living alone or, or aren't able to get out as much. They're really seeking some kind of public contact, uh, even if it's not uh, sort of physically interacting with folks. We've also observed that, different patterns, patterns of behavior between men and women uh, in terms of you know, social distancing out in public space. We did a survey. Uh, people from around the country and around the world responded to the survey. How has your use of public space changed during the pandemic? A couple points I want to uh, call out here. Uh, one group of people who aren't using public space. We've had to stay indoors 100% of the time because our sidewalks are too tight for social distancing. We can't even, even walk safely to a park. On the other side, uh, they, you know, public people who are able to use public space, they've become more important to my mental health, uh, really to relieve stress and to be able to take a walk and also to kind of you know, take care of essential services. Um, people are feeling the pinch, you know, in their sort of neighborhood streets and essential errands. It's also where they're feeling crowding. But in general, I think because of the sort of enforced um, restrictions, people have seemed to be walking more and using car less in particular areas where that's possible. Um, so here's a snapshot of what other communities are doing around the country. So uh, in Tampa, a mid-sized city in uh, Florida, the, uh, they're easing rules to help businesses after the coronavirus shutdown. Here's an example of cafe tables and chairs out in the street with six feet apart to accommodate social distancing. City Hillsburg is moving ahead with opening public spaces to pedestrians and businesses. They have a great survey out there now. As you may have seen, Berkeley is going to close its streets to create giant outdoor dining rooms. Uh, uh, Dallas, they're creating a parklet program to encourage uh, outside um, uh, alfresco dining. The city of San Marcos, a small town in uh, Texas, is setting up a temporary parklet program. I want to focus a little bit on this case study from uh, Tampa, um, Florida. A mid-sized city, but a city of, of kind of smaller neighborhoods. They're about three or four weeks ahead of where we are in California. Uh, in, on April 29th, the governor's order enabled reopening at 25% capacity and then that was moved up to 50% capacity as long as there's six feet of separation between the patrons. They started with a 14-day pilot and now they've extended it. Uh, the mayor of Tampa is a woman named Mayor Jane. You know, her motto for this is let's reopen responsibly so we can lift up local. And I just think that's a great kind of motto um, for this effort. It's really about coming together as a community to support our, our local businesses. And the, you know, this effort in Tampa involved a collaboration across many different departments and, and entities working together. Uh, there was a series of uh, kind of stakeholder engagement like we're kind of starting today informally. And the outcome of that was that they started doing temporary sidewalk, uh, they, they waived the permit fees for uh, uh, temporary use of sidewalks for restaurant seating. Um, they waived the, the kind of requirement or the uh, permit fee for parklets, the temporary use of on-street parking for things like cafe tables and chairs and dining. They provided guidance to those restaurants in terms of how you safely accommodate the social distancing requirements and provide those additional tables and chairs. Uh, and they, al they also started doing these what they're calling cafe and retail zones. So they did some full street closures. They had planned eight of them. They ended up really focusing on three. In this case, the closure materials were provided by the city, uh, as opposed to the parklet program where the uh, individual proprietors were responsible for providing all the furnishing. In this case, the city provided the kind of closure materials. Uh, here's a kind of a 
a zoom into what that looks like. Uh, and and uh, so this is a, it's a, a street closure for a portion of a, I think it's two way roadway. They're using half of the roadway for seating and the other half looks like it's, it's for fire access. That police car there is actually blocking vehicular access. I think they're keeping that area clear to allow, you know, if a fire truck needs to get through there, but it's providing ample seat for outdoor dining. Um, they're also doing a great campaign in terms of kind of messaging and communicating with the community around this. Uh, you know, uh, as we've learned through doing temporary projects around the world, you know, temporary projects are uh, communication projects first and infrastructure projects second. And I think Tampa has some great examples here about really communicating what the guidelines are uh, in a clear but also fun and playful way. Takeaways, it's been a success. They started with a two week uh, 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 temporary uh, effort. Now they're going to continue that. The kind of business uh, uh, patronizing of those businesses has grown over the two weeks as people came down and saw, yes, I can safely dine here and still, you know, I'm out in, in the open air and I'm not at risk of, uh, of, of encountering the virus, but I can still patronize my local businesses. So they're going to extend the temporary effort. I want to share a little bit about what's, uh, what's happening nationally. So there's this group called National Association of City Transportation Officials. If you're a transportation planner or engineer anywhere in the world, you're reading this kind of work. And they've put out this great guide about pandemic, you know, streets for recovery and response. I want to focus on their principles, which I think are really apropos and also aligned with the Marin Recovers principles. First principle, support the most vulnerable people in our community. Second, Amplify and support public health guidance. We got to make sure everyone's aware of what the, the guidelines are. Safer streets for today and tomorrow. Uh, support local economies. Bring community into the process. We're starting that today. And, and I think very importantly, act now and learn and adapt over time. These are principles that people are using nationwide to do things like these uh, sidewalk extensions to allow increased width for walking at safe physical distance and for queuing uh, and some examples of that. Some uh, folks are doing what are called slow streets. So signs and barriers at entry points to indicate local traffic only. So still allowing vehicular access, but actually slowing down the traffic so it's a bit safer for people to walk into the, uh, into the right of way if they need that space to avoid encountering someone on the sidewalk. And there's ground markings to indicate the shared space where it's possible. A couple examples from that in Oakland is now doing 74 miles of slow streets. Berkeley, I think is doing something similar. New Zealand approved a plan to kind of reduce vehicular speeds, you know, provide vehicular access and service access, but also create shared spaces for businesses. Pick up and drop off and loading zones, critical, you know, now. We're, we're already seeing the Gestalt House and other businesses in the downtown, Girardelli's, um, you know, having pick up and drop off access. This is crit critical to integrate into some temporary projects. So dedicated areas for trucks, bikes, and cargo bikes to load and un unload. And I think dedicated space for vehicle pickup and drop off. So if you're an elder in the community and you're not able to drive yourself, someone can take you down uh, to patronize these local businesses and kind of get you into where the action is. Um, and then, then, then finally, the idea about, you know, uh, the extending space for protected space and for dining in the roadbed, which many communities are doing, utilizing city provided physical delineators and bollards and some examples of that. There's the example in Tampa that we looked at before. I think this one from Dallas is interesting because a local nonprofit, Better Block, they have this you know, template for these uh, vegetable racks to allow restaurants to sell excess um, uh, supply in outdoor grocery markets. But this could easily work for you know, a clothing store or uh, some other type of vendors who don't necessarily need the outdoor seating, but they don't have space in their footprint of their um, retail uh, outlet to allow people to, to physically spend time there and be safe. So here's an idea about supporting local businesses who are more on the retail uh, end and not just on the food and beverage end. Um, so some ideas for downtown Fairfax. Um, we're kind of zooming into the Broadway Bolinas intersection here um, in front of Gearingelli's Pizza. You know, there's these parallel parking spaces could offer an opportunity there. Uh, I started to take a look, and, and by the way, these are just my ideas. You know, I haven't vetted these obviously with any of you on the city council yet. I did share this with the mayor and Stephanie Hellman earlier, but again, these are, these are my ideas. Uh, I'm taking ownership of them. They're not vetted by anyone in city council, but this is to start a conversation. So let's take a look at Bolinas Road. Um, Bolinas Road uh, between Broadway and Elsie, here's the existing condition, right? We've got a six foot sidewalk, a seven foot parking lane, 
two 12 foot travel lanes and the same thing on the other side. It's a 50 foot right of way, relatively, you know, relatively narrow right of way, but a beautiful, a beautiful street, narrow sidewalks, um, an option to consider. Maybe uh, Fairfax could uh, do a temporary parklet program. What that would look like with the parklet requirements is uh, basically in a seven by 20 parking space, which is what most of the parking spaces are downtown, you know, you allow businesses to, who are interested in the program to maybe waive the permit fee, but they apply for the, they apply for the program. That individual proprietor then builds out a deck and a platform to allow for that uh, seating or even pedestrian access. That's kind of how parklets work around the world. So the city issues the permit but then the individual proprietor builds out that deck. And the way kind of the parklet guidelines work, even in a, in a seven by 20 parking space, the parklet ends up being six by 18 to allow some buffer around uh, vehicular uh, travel and the adjacent uh, parking space. This is what parklets look like all around the country. Um, and uh, and here's, here's an example from Sebastopol, California, really, really, really nice one. Uh, and what it, what it might look like if you do if you stack a couple together, right? So instead of just one spot, maybe do two or three. If the businesses can collaborate and figure out a way to kind of you know, and then you can actually get a few more tables and chairs uh, than you can in an individual um, uh, parklet. So just taking a quick look at you know downtown, this kind of intersection of Broadway uh, between uh, Elsie and or Bolinas between Elsie and Broadway. And uh, along Broadway, there's about 43 parking spaces. Maybe these are areas we would offer the opportunity for businesses to take advantage of some kind of parking program, a parklet program. And zooming in a little bit, you know, maybe we want to delineate some areas for passenger pickup and drop off and takeout, kind of designated spaces to go from, I think it's two hour parking now to more like 10 minute uh, loading for people who want to do takeout and elders who want to get down to this or people who need kind of, you know, mobility impaired. But then maybe you allow, in these other areas I'm drawing here, conceptual ideas here, maybe this is where you allow those uh, businesses to create parklets if they want to. Um, some pros and cons of the parklet program, it allows individual businesses to take initiative, right? So this is really, it's like a partnership with the city and the local business community. And there's lots of successful examples from around, you know, the city and the country uh, and, and the world, and they've proven to be quite safe. There's just very few, if little, incidents of kind of accident and injury with, um, this kind of spaces in the uh, in the in the in the parking lane. One of the cons, I think, is that it might be too costly for local businesses to implement on their own. So, having built a lot of parklets, I know that you know they generally cost between five thousand at the absolute minimum. It's more like twenty five thousand dollars a space in terms of creating the level platform. Whether you do it with steel or with wood or with other stuff. And so, I just don't know if our local businesses have you know between you know, ten and twenty thousand dollars, twenty five thousand dollars laying around to be able to invest in creating this sort of level deck. That's the standard for Parklet is that the space has to be contiguous with the sidewalk for ADA access um, for mobility impaired folks. Secondly, the Parklet, because they're six by eighteen, I you know, and given what we've got in terms of narrow sidewalks and beliefs, it may not provide enough space for effective social distancing for people to kind of walk by if people are occupying a parklet, there may not be enough space to provide that effective social distancing if it's still six feet apart. And they might not provide enough commercial space, you know, in terms of vending or seating to have a significant economic benefit to those communities. Here, here's what I mean. So our sidewalks are quite narrow on, uh, on Bolinas as we looked at earlier. Um, if you add parklet space there, this is just conceptual. This isn't a design. This is just about what it sort of looks like to add an additional six feet of uh, commercial space uh, adjacent to the sidewalk, you get about 12 feet. Um, and, but just in kind of observing, you know, what's happening downtown over the last couple of weekends, thank God, uh, Gestalt House is open again, doing takeout, uh, takeout beer and sausage. So, so happy about that. And yet, you know, with the queuing on the sidewalk, uh, there's not enough space to safely pass in front of the people who are queuing on the sidewalk. That's why this guy's walking in the, in the, in the, in the parking lane. And so I'm, you know, I'm concerned that we both want to support local businesses and we want to make sure we're adhering to the health code. Um, even around the corner in front of Fairfax Roastery in Ghirigelli's, Gir um, uh, it's an eight foot sidewalk, but um, there's clutter and benches and other stuff that's not allowing uh, adequate space for safe social distancing here. I don't, I, I'm pretty sure these two, this young woman and this guy aren't six feet apart. Um, 
to, 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 to say nothing if you have a stroller or other stuff you're trying to navigate through those narrow sidewalks to begin with. So just up the road in front of Fairfax Scoop, you know, they've got an eight foot sidewalk, eight to nine foot of sidewalk space, and then this 11 foot um, bulb out thing. And that's working, you know, I'm so happy that Fairfax Scoop is open. I went, I think I went twice this weekend to get the cherry ice cream. And you're talking about eight feet of space in the sidewalk and more like 11, you know, 11 and a half feet uh, in that um, bulb out. So that's 19 or 20 feet. That seems to be enough space, uh, you know, in terms of providing space for queuing and potentially for cafe tables and chairs and also for a, a clear pedestrian through zone. Um, we just started looking at diagramming, you know, how many cafe tables and chairs you can fit in a parklet. And it seems like it's like a maximum of, of two, two tops and maybe two, four tops, but it's really tight in terms of accommodating um, both those tables and allowing people to pass safely on the sidewalk. It's really tight and maybe not enough space. So, and listen, I, I created, I helped create parklets. I've done them many places. I think they're great. I just don't know if they're the right solution here in terms of both enough uh, room for businesses and enough room for public safety. So here's another option to consider uh, what I'm calling a shoplet. Other communities are calling them streeteries, right? Like basically outdoor dining areas in the street. If we were to utilize more of the right of way, not just the parking space, but use a little bit more of the right of way, we might be able to get 15 feet, uh, which I think would provide adequate space for someone to be occupying a cafe table and chair in the shoplet space in the road bed. Uh, and for someone to pass safely on the sidewalk, practicing effective social distancing. And if we do, you know, provide additional curb cuts, we can get ADA, uh, 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 ADA access down into this um, uh, commercial seating space without having to build out a level deck at the cost of twenty to twenty-five thousand dollars a space. So, I think you know this is an option that gives us a little bit more flexibility in terms of both public safety, uh, mobility impaired access, and accommodating needs of local businesses. What does that look like? Um, this is what it looks like in our existing street section. We've got six foot sidewalks, maybe a nine foot shoplet. Um, we would go down to narrowing the vehicular lanes from it's now 24 feet to 20 feet. Within that 20 feet of space, you could do two way vehicular access, you know, either one or both directions. You could also accommodate emergency vehicle access. That's how I'm kind of thinking about this and wanting to hold that 20 feet clear. Uh, of course, you know, we want to hear the fire marshal's uh, um, uh, response to this, but generally in most communities, 20 feet is plenty for EV access. And, uh, and then you could also do other things if you wanted to convert to one way. You know, you could do one travel lane and two bike lanes. But anyway, a lot of options in that 20 feet of space. And I think that the shoplet, you know, going from six feet to nine feet, just that additional three feet of space, that's like the minimum space for ADA access. Uh, mobility impaired access is three feet. You get that in the roadbed without having to build a, a big, uh, a, a kind of a, a relatively expensive deck. So another option to consider. Um, this is what that kind of looks like, you know, sketched out in the street, six feet of sidewalk, nine feet of, um, uh, of a commercial space in the roadbed gets you 15 feet total, enough space for effective social distancing. And I think, you know, parklets, as I said, you know, it's on the individual proprietor. The shoplet concept is something we could do as a community. You know, we could literally come out one weekend with paints and with bollards and, of course, with the guidance from the city and from uh, transportation, uh, uh, from the traffic engineering folks. But we could do this in a weekend and literally paint the space if we want to or even just set up the bollards and cones. People do this all over the country. There's a great organization called Better, Better Block out of Dallas that helps struggling downtowns revitalize their downtown through creating a bit more uh pedestrian friendly environments there and more spaces for commercial seating. Again, this could be something we do together as a community and you see what this looks like. It's very simple, low cost, cheap, but effective. Um, and so here's another option to consider. Uh, um, pros and cons of this, it's a flexible, low cost solution. There's less cost to the individual businesses. I think it provides enough space for seating and pedestrian movement. There's also an opportunity for community participation. You know, we can show our support for local businesses by being part of some kind of temporary um, effort like this. On the con side, the city has, has to have the resources to kind of set up the space and provide the bollards or do a big volunteer coordination effort. Um, and then there's possible conflict with the travel lanes. You know, if, if we've got two lanes of travel immediately adjacent to the shoplet, um, you know, th there could be conflict there unless we think about 
you know, potentially reducing vehicular speeds on, uh, on Bolinas. So that's some, that's a conversation, you know, the, the community, uh, you would, uh, the council would need to have with uh, the fire marshal and other folks. So there's some ideas. Uh, I think now we wanted to turn it over to um, questions and discussion. And I'll yeah. Okay, John, thank you so very much. That was incredibly thorough and it gave us a lot, a lot to ponder. And I, right now I'm very proud to say, or you all should be very proud to know that there's 88 of us on this call. I guess you can see that on your screens. If you are calling in, um, or if you are on a Zoom and you'd rather watch us on TV, we are streaming with Community Media Center of Marin, and that's on channel 30. Um, so you go to www.marintv.org and you go on channel 30, which is in the, gov the government channel. Um, so just so, just so y'all know. So council, um, let's remember this is not, this is just a special council meeting because we wanted us all to be able to be here, but really this is an opportunity for the public to share their, their ideas and their responses and reactions to what they just learned um, and got to see from John. So any, any quick questions for John uh, from council or even for myself or Stephanie who've been working on this, Barbara. Just a question for John, uh, just a quick statement. So about 10 years ago when I was on the planning commission, we did work on parklets and we were looking at a temporary parklet that could move around because of our limited space. Morgan Hall, who's a local architect, worked with me and others on it and it kind of fell apart. But I liked your point about the cost of parklets and that might not be as doable, but I'm wondering on the shoplet idea, which is low cost, and I'm just wondering if there's kind of something in between there where we take less space so that we're not impeding traffic and ingress and egress because Fairfax doesn't have a lot of ways in and out. So I, I like the shoplet idea because I think that could be done relatively easily. So is there in between, even though I like also your point about ADA space? Yeah, I mean, I think there's probably a whole range of you know options in the middle that that could be considered. Um, you know, when we started looking at basically, I think I think that that you know the 20 feet clear is something that needs to be discussed with the fire marshal. In some communities we work with, by kind of reaching out early uh, to the fire marshal, we've been able to you know been able to narrow that uh, kind of uh, clear area to like 14 feet for emergency vehicle access. Um, you know, uh, and um, and then with that 20 feet clear area, that's plenty of room to accommodate two vehicular travel lanes. So actually that chocolate concept doesn't alter the vehicular circulation on Bolinas at all. Um, you know, and uh, and basically, you know, uh, 20, uh, two 10 foot lanes is the, the County of Marin's kind of minimum guidelines for uh, emergency vehicle access in the case of some kind of emergency event like a fire. So, you know, that's two 10 foot lanes is the sort of basic requirement for two way travel for emergency access for, for in the case of the fire. So one option is to think about, well, maybe uh, Bolinas in terms of vehicular travel remains two way like it is today. Your other option is to say, let's make it two way in the outbound direction, right? In the case of an emergency, we've well, you've actually got, instead of just of being able to exit uh, from the Cascades, let's say towards uh, Sir Francis Drake, on um, on Bolinas, on one lane of traffic, and on Elsie and Banks in another lane, you would have two access uh, egress lanes on Bolinas if it's two way in one direction, and two uh, one uh, one access one egress on Bolinas and Banks. There's a lot of different ways to think about configuring that roadbed. I, I, I've showed the sort of basic requirements there, but there's a lot of space to play with. I think the important thing to note is. Um, is what it's going to take to really provide effective social di social distancing on what are relatively narrow sidewalks. I mean, I, I don't think you know, I, I, I don't think we're seeing as many residents coming downtown now because you you literally can't, as Mayor pointed out, you can't pass someone on the sidewalk and be adhering to social distance guidelines. So I I love it that um, you know the scoop the Fairfax scoop is open and um, Gestalt House is open, but 
it's some people not, may not feel safe. So, and I don't know if the additional six feet in a parklet, in a kind of typical parklet is actually enough. So that's why I want to introduce these other options. And I think your, you know, your points about the cost of a parklet on these individual businesses is a really important one. I don't know if Fairfax businesses are in a position to spend ten or fifteen thousand dollars to do a parklet right now. Uh, and but there's certainly a middle ground. And and so yeah, um, I think. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Appreciate sure. it. Okay, we're going to go quick on council questions. Okay, so uh, we we have a lot of people waiting. So Bruce, I'll try to be quicker with my response. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Thanks. Yeah, I will, uh, and we don't have to have a response right away. But I just wanted to um, thank you for the presentation and for this idea and this opportunity, really, to sort of do rapid experimentation and see what might work, which I I think we can. We can learn from. So I think that's really a key to what you were saying. And with regard to that, <clears throat> I'm wondering whether it would be possible to do the level space for a parklet that it sounds like the requirement for that is for um, for access from the sidewalk without having to go down the step. Um, right. Building a, a wooden parklet, given that it's temporary and given that it's quite possibly going to be mostly used in the summer, good weather, would it be possible to build a, a wooden platform and, and do it for quite a bit less money? You don't need to answer now, just wanted to throw that out and thank you. Sure, yeah, that's a good idea, yeah. Okay, anyone else? Okay, um, so here's the, here's the situation. We have an hour and 20 minutes as scheduled mm -hmm. and I see 84 participants. So can I see, do you guys all know how to show your raised hand symbol on your Zoom screen. Um, if you do, could you please raise your hand if you are going to want to speak? Well, presumably they all want to speak, right? Not necessarily. In fact, many won't. Okay. 27, 30, wow. This is really exciting, you all. Um, I, I appreciate everyone's participation. Uh, so right now we're teetering between 30 and 31. So if we took three minutes, we'd have exactly an hour and a half, um, which is fine with me. Um, so we're, not, we're gonna be writing down uh, any really particular questions, but at this point, we're going for solution-oriented thinking. It doesn't have to be that, hey, go, 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 but it has, it, 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 we have to start looking at what we're gonna do in the next couple of weeks. So any ideas you have or anything that you wanna say no, no way, please share that now. Um, remembering that on June 3rd, we're gonna be looking at policies and trying to figure out how to go forward. Um, so let's go ahead, Michelle, you're gonna help me, or you're actually going to tell me who's waiting and call their names. I, um, I just want to point out that there's still a slight, like a 30 second delay uh, between the CMCM TV stream and the Zoom, but that'll oh. be the problem because obviously uh, the presentation is over and everybody will be in open time at the same time. Okay. okay, that sounds good. And then Garrett, what about the clock? Garrett will, yeah, he has the timer. And um, that helps. Wanna, who are on the telephone calling in to get your hand raised to enter the speaker queue, you press star nine. And I can see you on my screen. And there are uh, over 30 people in line, so you all have to be patient. Don't, don't press the raise hand icon or the star nine more than once, or it takes you out of the queue. So it's not a waving hand. All right. All right, that that sounds good. Just minor correction. I directed everyone to channel thirty, um, and it, I had it's not under government though; it's under education. Government is the planning commission meeting. So um, let's go ahead and start, Michelle. All right, um, I'm allowing uh, D Lee to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Deborah Benson, 370 Cascade Drive. Hi. Hi. So um, this was a really a lot of work to put this presentation together, and that's that's lovely. Um, I wonder 
I wonder if we're considering hiring a consultant to do the this temporary reconfiguring of downtown. Um, San Anselmo is working to get the pieces in place with a combination of staff, the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, the business owners. And they are, before they're taking any big steps, they're, they're keeping track of what uh, Willis is, is uh, changing. It may be that we're going to be allowed to have uh, a retail open a person at a time, which would mean that we wouldn't need shoplets. Um, I noticed that there's a a, uh, a slogan uh, um, on the uh, the Gale website, John Cities for People, that strongly reminds me of the Streets for People event that's promoted every year by by the mayor. And I noticed that the focus of this presentation is on changing Bolinas Road. Um, what about Broadway? Bolinas Road is a major evacuation route for over 3,500 people. Uh, one of your configurations, you, so, you showed two 10-foot lanes. Um, uh, are bicycles not going to be allowed on Bolinas Road? Because if they are, that 10-foot lane, if you're keeping three feet away from a bicyclist, so it's most likely three feet away from whatever is on the side, is going to narrow the the uh, lane to four feet. Um, I live up Cascade Drive, and this is my safety route. I think it's a complete mistake to consider changing anything on Bolinas Road in San Anselmo. For I have my office is in San Anselmo, and San Anselmo for weeks now. The town has put up pickup only, uh, just signs, traffic signs, where they're blocking off a parking space in front of a retail establishment or a restaurant. Why don't we start there and then figure out what's going on, uh, what's going on from there? Um, a lot of the places uh, that you have mentioned, John, um, are cities. Most of them, in fact, are cities. We are not a city. Um, like Oakland of 429,000 or Berkeley of 121,000. We're a 7,500 people small town with limited resources, limited parking. I think we need to do what we can to help the, uh, the businesses. But a lot of this uh, sounds kind of permanent. I mean, why even bring up a $25,000 parklet for uh, this this period from uh, summer through early fall. Why would why would that even be brought up? Um, Deborah, are you are you able to see the clock? Um, oh, I'm done. Okay, thank you. Okay. I guess that's it. Thank you. I wasn't looking. I was looking at my notes. Oh, okay. Thank you. All right. Um, next. Well, I'm mute or anything? No. Okay. Uh, no, you're good. Okay. Can you hear me? Next is uh, Maya. Um, Hi, can you hear me? Yes, Maya, before I before you begin, I briefly would like to recommend, I, I'm not recommend, I would like to request of the public that when you speak, could you speak, kind of speak to council or to your community and not single out John, who's a volunteer here? It just would be better for us all to hear the concerns and not have it be about John's presentation per se, maybe just about the ideas and the concepts of what you feel is good and not good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Maya Butterfield, 11 Shemran Court. Um, I will not take my three minutes. I just want to say that I think, I'm really happy the town is looking at this. I think um, we all have to move very quickly and be really flexible and work together as a community because I really want to have a downtown that still has living businesses when this is all over. Um, I love the ideas. I'm not a traffic person, so I don't have any expertise there, but I just really want to see some um, innovative things happen because I'd really like to see Fairfax survive. And that's it, I'm out. Thank you, Maya. Uh, next. Uh, next is Jean. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Great presentation. Um, uh, Jean Lishtock, 70 Redwood Road. Um, 
just quick question. I, I love the idea. I was wondering if uh, John, and you, when you said it, it costs you know five to even twenty thousand dollars. Is there? Do you have any experience in maybe some kind of like doing it cheaper if everybody does it at once? You know, so instead of it being per business, is there like you know some kind of can this be done in bulk where somebody does like the whole one side of the street and the whole side of the street, and therefore it's uh, more economical? That's hey. it. Gene, thank you. We, we're going to write down all of these questions. Those that we can answer or put out an FAQ, we will do. Um, and these are questions that are being explored on not just a local level, but on a countywide level. So thanks for the question. Great. Thank you. Next is Holly Bragman. Hi, can you hear me? Hi, Holly. Hi, everybody. Um, hi, John. Um, wow, we're so lucky to have John in town. I didn't even know that that was a thing. So um, I don't have a lot to say. I've been thinking um, for a long time about um, creating a square in town. And I wanted to like, you know, well, I don't, I, I just think John's ideas seem very well thought out. You know, he, he put out some that seemed unworkable, but then he followed them up with one with reasons why they really didn't work and showed us how other ones could. So um, I'm super excited about it. And um, I'm gonna give Larry the rest of my time because we're here together, if that's okay. Okay, thank you. Um, hi, hi, John, hi, council members. So, hey, so um, the one thing I thought of is maybe, I assume the parklets are not gonna be set up 24 hours a day that the the shop owners, restaurants are going to take their tables out. So what about instead of putting it on Bolinas Road, um, putting a, like a street lit on Mono Alley around the corner mm -hmm. from Gestalt, and then you could do on the other side of the road, you could close that side of Mono Alley for the sushi place, right? Just maybe four hours per day. Right, so you're not going to really affect vehicular traffic on the thoroughfare. And then there's another spot, the Bank Street Extension, which now is just sort of, um, you know, it's just blacktop. We could fix that up in a weekend with volunteers and make that into like sort of a community gathering safe space for the community right there. So I think if we could grab some of these little spaces, public spaces, just a few hours a day, you know, four or five hours, it might fit better into sort of our traffic flow and our, our grid. So, so those are, those are my suggestions. Cool. Right. Great, great ideas. Thank you, Larry. All right. Uh, next, Michelle. Uh, Stephen Sachs. Um, hello? Hello. This is Liesl. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Uh, hi, Liesl. You, you're showing up as Stephen Sachs, but that's okay. Well, unfortunately, I am signed in as someone else, I just realized. Um, I was wondering why he was in a Fairfax meeting. Anyway, um, I just uh, was really actually excited by what Holly and Larry just said, and that was something that I was wondering about, is if we can use some of the parking spaces that are off of the street as um, areas that uh, could serve businesses. Um, I'm also just thinking about whether or not there's some way to widen the sidewalks on um, Bolinas and uh, whether or not we put parklets or shoplets there because it's really, I have to walk out in the street a lot to social distance from people and it's a little daunting, especially during the farmer's market or whatnot. Um, and then I just think we need to find a way to make this place more fun and get our community back. So along with all of this, if we can come up with some community events that include street art or chalk painting that are all uh, socially distance, it would be a lot of fun. And um, I also want to echo the question of, can some of this be done on um, Broadway? Because some of our restaurants actually face onto Broadway and they have a parking space or two in front of them that maybe could be taken up as a, a parklet or a shoplet. And um, if there's a way to do that without impeding their you know, pick up and drop off that they kind of really need right now, that would be great. Um, so I'm just really excited that we're thinking about this. We're moving into a whole new era and it just feels like we really need to, um, we do need to think out of the box because we can't just keep going the way we're going um, and still have a, a, a 
ballad vital downtown. So thank you very much for just considering all of this and letting us uh, bring up suggestions. Okay, thank you, Liesl. Um, next speaker, please. Uh, next is Mark Solomons. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, I just want to say that I'm here because I read Richard Devereaux's um, Facebook posts, <clears throat> haven't participated in quite a long time, but it's really interesting to hear all the suggestions. It's so important for the businesses to get reestablished. Um, I just want to say for myself, wearing a mask on the street, I feel comfortable. I'm going to go buy someone quickly, just like I would going on a trail, which I did yesterday. Uh, that, that doesn't uh, make me uncomfortable. Um, and then I had these other ideas that I wondered about earlier, which is whether restaurants could have designated days that they are like Friday is this restaurant, Saturday is that restaurant, and maybe two or three at a time so that people are patronizing them. They're really working. The, um, the staff is working more. Their, their, their uh, food is going uh, out the door. They're making more money for their time. And the same thought that came to my mind on that note is whether or not a certain space could share a kitchen. And maybe um, the designated spot on the street could be closer to like Iron Springs is very, uh, it said lends itself with a lot of space with the sides area near the bike store. Uh, and then the other thought was uh, if we needed to, we, if we needed, if, if some things were uh, made into partlets, what about building a second level on the parkade? even if that was temporary. And my last comment is um, uh, the one-way street seems to me could could work to go down Bolinas and around where Perry Park is and then up the hill and coming out uh, past Ace or, or where, uh, yeah, I don't know. That could be a circle. I'm sure people have thought about that. For people coming from Cascade and around and, um, and yeah, that's all. Okay, thank you. Okay, Michelle. Okay, next is Andrea Summits. Hi, Andrea. Hi, this is Jason Morrison. I'm gonna talk first and then Andrea is gonna take the remaining minutes. Um, so first I just wanna express gratitude for having this discussion to the, the town council and also John to you for your willingness to take the time and energy to put the presentation together. There's a lot of thought that went into that. I appreciate it. Um, I know you asked for detailed solutions. I, I, Andrea has some of those. I just want to send a higher level message of um, the need to think innovatively and boldly. These are really unprecedented times and I've felt comforted knowing that in Fairfax, we've actually got really good leadership at local government. And there are a lot of parts around the US that don't have that and they're gonna suffer. And, and I'm just glad that we're having this conversation, A, and I just encourage you to take decisions when you get to that point that are bold and, and that are innovative because we're just not gonna be able to afford status quo and get through this next economic downturn that may go well into 2022. The, 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 the practical solution that I would give to John is this agile method of iterative learning and do the low cost, uh, no regrets, test it, see what it works. And then who knows, over time we put more money into things that are proven to work when we can afford to, but let's start with what's relatively cheap test it, see if it works. And there's stuff that may actually last well after a, a, we have a vaccine, who knows, but let's not put loads of money on the table out of the gates. Let's see what we can do low cast fast and then build on it over time. Over to Andrea. Okay, I also wanted to thank you guys. I think it's an excellent discussion ever uh, since I was young and traveled through Europe. I always wish there was more outdoor dining anywhere in the U.S. and it just never seemed to be here. So I'm so excited about the prospect. Um, just one little detailed suggestion, which is when I heard the talk about the parklets and even the street dining, not you know ha having to consider the six feet apart. Um, 
I know in offices, they're doing things like putting up um, plexiglass partitions or other material type partitions so that you can shrink that six feet distance just to get more in. And I would just say if it becomes the case that it's not cost effective because you can only get in so many tables in a small space, then to consider those types of partitions perhaps so that you can get more in to make it more um, feasible. That's all. Thank you. Great. Great Thank idea. you. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you, guys. Uh, next, Michelle. Next is Medicine School. Let's see. All right. Did I allow you to speak? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Hi, this is Holly from um, Medicine, um, which is the formal soul, soul yoga studio um, in the School Street Plaza. And uh, I have um, a few comments. I really appreciate the uh, creative and innovative presentation. I really like the coloring on the streets. I think that that would be beautiful in our neighborhood anyways. Um, Along with that, I think it's really important to think about not what we would do just for a short term, but what would we do that would also benefit us in the long term? We might be responding to a short term need, but then how can we utilize the um, infrastructure or the costs so that it would be long term positive as well? Um, but on behalf of the uh, businesses that uh, offer movement and wellness and healing uh, through meditation, um, we have uh, Yoga Mountain uh, in business in town and also a Soul Studios here in town, uh, now medicine. Um, I'm wondering if it's possible for the council member and mayor and the planning committee to also consider where we might be able to do work. Right now, there's a big um, ball field that's not really being used. And that could be used for outdoor yoga with six feet apart without any problem at all. Right now, the only places that people are being able to do yoga is uh, Zoom. And uh, so many people are like deer in the headlights when they are um, showing up on your Zoom class and they just really want their com community connection. And um, the ballpark seems like a it could be nice if uh, different yoga teachers um, and studios collaborated to share the space and the time, maybe even offered the classes as a donation um, or somehow make it a, a community effort. I would be really happy to be a part of that. Um, also, uh, from my business personally, I have outdoor space. I have an outdoor patio space. Um, and a side space that's uh, sort of uh, an empty space uh, in the parking lot, I could use these outdoor areas to create my outdoor uh, business as well uh, with maybe limited number of people to keep six feet apart. However, I need a permit to be able to work outside. And so I haven't been able to apply for that permit because the offices have been closed and my landlord is very, um, is, is, it's, it's very important to him that I get a permit first. So uh, as of um, the middle of May, the public health department says that it's okay to uh, work outside. And I would like to ask that the, uh, the town maybe help streamline this process so those of us who are in a different kind of business can get back to business quickly. Wow. Thank you very much, Holly, and uh, thank you for the suggestions and uh, some of the policy issues, as I mentioned, we will be taking up next week, uh, June 3rd, uh, 7 p.m. town council meeting. Thank you. Uh, Michelle, next speaker. Uh, David Snadbeck. Hi, David. Hi, guys. Uh, Dave Smadbeck, Executive Director of the Fairfax Chamber of Commerce. I just want to start off by thanking uh, uh, Renee and Stephanie for their hard work and, and trying to help our business community. They've been at this from the very beginning and their dedication and, uh, and hard work is paying off in many ways. We've got the fairfaxopenforbusiness.com started because of their work. Uh, they've put together the Business Relief Fund, which is uh, just, just got posted yesterday. 
Uh, we've been trying to work with our local businesses, uh, helping them through the PPP and idle programs. Uh, we're trying to find some private sources for them right now. And uh, this presentation by, that John Bella put on was absolutely fantastic. I mean, it gives us a lot of options. Um, I do want to just say that I've been getting a lot of calls uh, and emails from businesses uh, trying to find solutions, and, and I'm, I, I want to encourage all the business owners to weigh in on this. If they can't weigh in tonight, to at least weigh in either by email or by phone and communicating to us about what, they're, what they think their needs are, because it's actually the business owners that probably have the best ideas uh, and how we can move forward with the use of outdoor space. But I've been getting a lot of calls on outdoor space. And, uh, and I, I know we can find a, a solution that'll work for everybody. Um, and that's about all I have to say right now, but I just want to just tell, tell you guys that you're doing a great job and I'm really very impressed with today's uh, presentation. Thank you, David. It's been an absolute pleasure working with you. Uh, next speaker. Uh, next is Daniel Knightley. Yeah, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Can. So, yeah, Daniel Knightley, 11 Coolidge Ave in Fairfax. Um, and I really wanted to thank you all for doing this. Like right now as it is, I find like when I go downtown, even just to pick up, take up at Fralizio's, I just find it very congested on the sidewalk. and. I find myself out in the street a lot, which is, that's a concern. Um, I, I do think we need to find some solution here or, or you know, or, or other places that like if San Anselmo solves it, you'll tend to want to go there more. Um, and, and I really liked, I think, I think what's exciting about a lot of John's proposals is these solutions aren't permanent. Like you might set this up and part of the day, take away, you know, narrow the street down to some extent, but then you could open up at night or, in the event of emergency, you pull all the street, all the things off the street, and you have the whole streets open to drive out. So, I think that's great. And I, I think with like cars and bikes, I like your proposal of slowing the traffic down, and we can have cars and bikes. They could actually just share the lane. There's no, you don't need to have an extra space. Um, and that's it. And then also, I think it's to also understand that all those bikers coming to town, as much as they sometimes drive us crazy, they dump a lot of money here and buy. You know. I can't. I can only eat so many uh, burgers and pizza and stuff. So anyway, gotta make them happy too. So thanks. Okay. Thank you, Daniel. Um, next speaker, please. Next is Jamie McMillan. Hmm. Jamie, can so you unmute yourself? Hmm. Unmute yourself, Jamie. She's. I think uh, maybe you need to unmute her, Michelle. Um, I'm pressing unmute, and it's not working. So I think Jamie, if you are. Um, you might check your microphone down in the lower left corner. Uh, let's see. Yeah, she's unmuted on my end. Or he. Do you, do you want to take the next speaker and see if we can sort Jamie out? Okay. It is Lauren and Rob Sandusky. Hi, this is Rob Sandusky. We uh, live up at the end of Toyon. Um, thanks for putting the presentation together. Uh, I know these are difficult times. Um, I have a couple of uh, responses and, and an idea for you. We, we're at the deep end of the egress in the event of emergency of those 3,000 people who live down in the Cascade Valley. Um, we're on the top of a hill, narrow streets. I would strongly urge not con not constricting Bolinas in any way because Bolinas is only like when traffic gets down there in an emergency. Um, Bolinas is one of several routes that people will be taking to get the heck out of here. We're facing probably one of the hottest summers we've ever had. We've had wildfires annually throughout Northern California. 
just think about paradise. Um, I don't want Fairfax to end up like paradise and they certainly don't want to die in a fire with my family. So uh, please keep that in mind. Um, I would also like to note that when um, we look at other communities throughout the country uh, who are taking on uh, these types of measures, I think it's great, but we need to be a little cautious as to the impacts on COVID-19. A lot of the uh, stats we're getting from places like Texas and Florida are being doctored for political reasons. We've seen increases as soon as states mention that they're going to open up. Uh, we see the, the, the reports of new cases increasing rather quickly, and then lately they've been dropping precipitously as those politics get involved. So please uh, keep that in mind. One suggestion might be um, uh, the, the ballpark and other park areas could be set up with tables and have runners employ some additional people, whether kids or folks who have lost their jobs or so on to act as runners between the stores and restaurants. Um, you know, you place your order, they, they go and pick it up and bring it out to you and you can dine uh, under the stars or under a large tent. And that might also service some of the non-restaurant businesses uh, like one of our faves, uh, Rev9 could have uh, a sidewalk sale or something like that in a large enough space such as the ball, ball field so that uh, you know people can come and uh, either browse on online and place an order or actually have uh, you know, racks and stuff on there away from Bolinas, away from where the traffic needs to go. And one last uh, option might be to, uh, because of the bike traffic, um, maybe uh, encourage them to take other routes other than Bolinas. Perhaps the coffee roastery, which is a super hot spot, could could uh, open up a shack over on the parkade or up by the ballpark so that, uh, you know, some of that congestion um, can get mitigated that way. Um, but thanks again for the presentation, and I like that we're we're trying to figure out ways to get out of this. Thanks. Thank you, Rob. Uh, super helpful suggestions. Um, next speaker, Michelle. Um, okay, the next speaker would be oh, Jamie. We can try again. Oh wow, Jamie, are you there? Um, Not sure how you want to handle this. We can't hear you. When I unmute you, your your microphone seems to be muted on your end, Jamie. Can are, are is she hearing you? Can you see her, Michelle? Um, no, none of the attendees' videos can work during a webinar. Um, well, maybe she hears you, and she'll keep working on it. Okay. And if she hears me, uh, you could try calling in. What about if she emails in a question? Um, Maybe I'm that actually, I don't have my email available for that tonight. Okay. You could okay. Um, another time and I would forward it to you. Okay. Actually, Michelle, I'm going to quickly uh, read the phone number where people can call in in case they're mm -hmm. having any technical difficulty making their comments. Okay. Uh, the telephone number, um, if you want to listen by telephone, meaning also you can comment is star 67 uh, 669 um, And at the prompt, you enter the meeting ID, which is 812-4620-2390. And to speak, you press star nine. Okay. Uh, just to clarify, to, to get onto the speaker queue, you press star nine. And then you're uh, on the in line to speak by telephone. Sometimes your phone will be automatically muted. If it is, you can try pressing star six. Jamie, I suggest if you're on the phone, you press star six and see if that works. Okay, we have plenty okay. more speakers, so let's go ahead and move forward, please. Move on to um, J O N C. Hi guys, this is John. Um, Thanks again for the presentation, and it's a real uh, great asset to have John in our town uh, um, to help advise us on this. Um, I think a lot of what I wanted to say has been said, but I just wanted to emphasize a couple really quick points. Um, I, I think that, you know, there's a lot of different spaces and different ways to configure our downtown. And I think that all of us are recognizing um, the importance of, of social community, um, having been away from it for so long. So I think as we think about the long term, 
um, we should think broadly about how we can use all of the different spaces in our community. And I would reiterate most importantly, um, the need to kind of think big, but to act small and act with agility um, in just trying to test things and experiment with things. I run a big innovation agency, or not so big, but an innovation agency that works with a lot of big companies. And um, you know, this is a community where a lot of antibodies can come out and people have a lot of opinions, but there's no harm in just trying things and putting up temporary barriers or doing temporary road closures or experimenting with different ways to use um, publicly available spaces. So I just hope that we'll um, a, find a way to act quickly for the businesses that need it, but also think long-term about creative ways um, and a big vision around how we can uh, better use our public spaces. Because I think Fairfax, um, it would be great if it had a little bit more of a European feel um, and a little bit more of a community feel. And it's, it's uh, something I've always thought was the, kind of the one missing element to our downtown. And if um, this can be an impetus to, to really think about that and how to make our downtown vibrant and a place that draws people, um, I think that would be fantastic. And I think we can get there one small step at a time. Great, thank you so much, John. Uh, next speaker, Michelle. Uh, Jessica Green. Okay. Jessica. Let's see, she's muted, hang on. I'm mute. Where'd she go? I think Brenna just jumped in. Whoops. Oh, oh there's Jessica, I see. Okay. Okay. Um, well, I, I think it was an interesting presentation, um, but I think a lot of the places he showed as examples are much bigger places than Fairfax. Their streets are huger. There are sidewalks, everything is this, you know, it's a whole other ball of wax, some of those places. So we're, but there are things we can do. And like we all, a lot of restaurants here have backyards, like um, the Thai, I'm not sure that the Thai place has, but the place that was the Sleeping Lady, which I'm not sure what it is now has. Um, the Thai, the Thai place also has that big parking lot between it and Perry's. You know, I, I think maybe we can sacrifice some, some parking lots because I really think it's important to keep that Bolinas Road open for the fire trucks. And I don't think 10 feet is adequate for traffic because even in our little roads here, they want 12 feet for just the fire truck. And um, so I, I really think we're gonna to have to keep that Bolinas Road open for fire escape. Um, but I think, you know, it could be that some parking places can be given up if the restaurant doesn't have like, um, you know, an alley alleyway next to it or a backyard or some, some something that could be arranged. Or even that parking space near the, um, uh, the Gestalt House could maybe be shared by some restaurants. Um, I mean, obviously, we're going to have to give up some parking to allow for tables or something. But I, I really think that building these parklet things, it sounds too permanent to me. Because I think in the long run, we really need that Bolinas Road. It's a tiny road as it is. And um, I think it's important. Um, so that's uh, that's that's mainly what I have to say about this. I think you know there's a lot of creative ideas we can have, but that we need to keep that the fire truck being able to get up up and down Bolinas and and maybe traffic too, so people can get out if there's fires. And I don't think having it go one way is going to really help. Uh, you know, emergency vehicles have to get in and people have to get out all at the same time. Um, but I do think there are things we can do with these, you know, backyards and, and, and little parking areas and alleyways, you know, um, that we could, you know, do something with. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jessica, for yeah. the suggestions. Appreciate it. Um, Michelle, next. Next is Mallory. Hi, everybody. Um, can you hear me? Hi, Mallory. We can't hear you. Can you turn up? Get closer. 
No. Maybe turn off your video while you're talking to get a better bandwidth. Uh, there you go. Yes? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So we've gone through this whole thing with the town and the one-way thing and the parklets and other meetings. And we pretty much decided it's not going to work. We've also gone through the whole thing about you know, consultants talking about other places. And we're not Tampa, we're not Lancaster, we're not Dallas, we're not New Zealand. And every picture had that was shown, thank you for the presentation, but every picture that was shown had way more space on streets and on sidewalks than we have. It's none of this is relevant. And it's not also... Um, only relevant to talk about restaurants. We have a lot of different businesses here. So we have to think creatively about how we get money to the businesses more than anything else. Um, we're not Healdsburg. They opened. Sonoma County is rising in their um, COVID people getting sick. And, um, you know, th this is a serious thing. We really, six feet apart in a restaurant, they have already shown that it's dangerous to be inside. So you have to figure out an outside thing if that's going to work at all. And what I think we really need to think about is how to get money to the people who are in business here, not just restaurants. So we have to think creatively. So we could either... People who go out every week can go get their vouchers every week and then use them whenever they can use them for later or for takeout. Or we can have um, lotteries for people to buy, uh, to buy um, coupons for businesses, for uh, clothing, for food, for any, any of our shops. Or we can have contests so that they can so people can um, give money and then pick a winner like we do with lotteries. But everything that we're talking about, it's dangerous to have, to make the site, to make uh, Bellina smaller. We've already had this discussion. If there's a fire, people are going in and out. I know I'm repeating what Dee Lee said and what um, other people said, but we've been there we've done that we've talked about this okay we don't we don't need the parklet program we don't need the um to to have more vehicles try to jam through on bolinas um and we don't we're not other other towns we're a very unique town we're we're a great town i hope we keep this town and it, and all we have to really think about is less about developing how you're going to do this other than how do we get money to the people who have uh, played now. That's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mallory. Uh, next speaker, please. I see Jenny Schmidt. I, I haven't heard Michelle invite me, but um, I'm assuming it is my turn. You are welcome. Sorry, I was muted, Jenny. <laughs> so good evening, Town Council. I want to thank you so much for this uh, fantastic presentation and the opportunity to um, participate in this process. Um, as a school teacher, we have been asked to make massive changes um, and I probably have since March been through three iterations of how to best run my classroom. I don't know what I'm gonna do in the fall. I'm gonna have to reinvent another iteration. Um, it has felt like a mad scramble. So what are you guys gonna do? Iterate, we need to try things and we need to make a plan and move on it. And we need to think that like, Businesses are now going out of business. We will not have our Fairfax if we hire a consultant, which I haven't heard anybody talking about. We, have, we will not have a Fairfax to return to unless we act swiftly with agile 
thinking that this is a temporary fix to what is probably a long-term problem. It seems to me like the, the big problem is that our sidewalks are too narrow. So how do we widen them? We take the parking spaces on each side of the street, we maintain our bike routes and we maintain uh, you know, ingress and egress for the people who live and need Bolinas to get out of town. Um, so to my mind, thank you, uh, John Bella, because it seems like all of your agile thinking can happen in a weekend with town volunteers. Put a can of spray paint in my hand and I will stripe off some parking spots. You know, it, it doesn't seem that complicated um, of a solution in order to try our best to maintain the beautiful Fairfax that we know and have and love. When I told my daughter, my college sophomore daughter, that um, this was a meeting I was going to, she said, well, why don't we, why don't you just like put up some picnic tables in the parking lot by the pavilion and have the restaurants like run food up there? And I was like, oh, well, I'll tell the town council that. <laughs> so all of the little spaces, the ones Larry mentioned, the le the alleys, the parking spaces, and we need a sidewalk pass, we need safe passage up and down Bolinas. So like the idea to keep the town alive um, is the right thinking. And in order to keep the town alive, we need to do something, not nothing. So I really appreciate um, your, your agile approaches and the intent to swift action. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jenny. Um, okay. Brenna. Brenna is next. Brenna, okay. Hi, Brenna. Hi. Hi, I'm Brenna Gubbins, owner of Live Water Surf Shop. And so I have a business right downtown. And yes, it's, it's been tough, I have to say, for all of us. I love all the ideas. Um, I, and, but the one thing I would love almost if, if we could do immediately is to change the parking from two hours uh, along Broadway and Bolinas Road and drop it down to 30 minutes so it's uh, so we can provide pickup spots. Um, right in front of my shop, I've been dealing with people parking, like coming in, going on bike rides for two hours and then coming back and and it's very disheartening, especially when you're trying to survive and your business is, I mean, well, your business is trying to survive. Um, I do, there are a few shops that are doing curbside pickup, but then again, you know, we're faced with the lack of parking right in front of our shops. Um, I, I like the ideas of the bump outs for maybe after four o'clock or five o'clock something, but definitely. My main concern is the safety of um, everyone, I guess, it, like towards the Cascades, all of those homes in Deer Park, just the safety, just in case there is a fire and, you know, that there's adequate space for them to get out quickly. Um, and that that's pretty much it that I have. Okay. Thank you, Brenna. Next uh, is uh, Pamela Meeks. Hi, Pam. Hey, you can hear me? I can. Okay. Um, first, big shout out to Renee and Stephanie for all the energy and enthusiasm to get something moving. And I'm all for helping if I can. Um, I, my stepfather had a small business and I worked in it. And I know those struggles. It's really hard. And to have a pandemic come in is just whammy. So I want to say that. Uh, I was a planning commissioner in town for nine years. I was the chair for a couple of years. I was there during all the planning for the general plan, including the downtown element. Um, there is many <laughs> people in town with very creative ideas and God bless them, you know, but we never got to a conclusion. And so it has remained the same. 
Um, but I, there's a couple of things that I sort of wanted to say, and um, I'm kind of, I could do the park parklet and the shoplet, but I actually like a lot of the ideas of moving out, out to the other perimeters of the town and getting really creative around that. Um, the, my only concern about taking up parking is those people are going to park somewhere else. And where are they going to park? And are we really going to enforce or help the bicyclists who do come out of town? How can we integrate or maybe give, we had at one time a place where we were going to create parking for bicyclists and they had their own places. And so we had all these ideas. And so I would ask that you review some of the general plan currently, which might help with some of this. I, I'm not really sure. And then um, the other thing is character. You know, Fairfax is this wonderful hamlet and we all moved here because we just loved the character and the energy and the vibe and all that. So if you do these shoplet parklets downtown, I would hope they would be integrated in a way that have that groovy love vibe, <laughs> you know, like it's not this walled off tunnel vision because some of those pictures shown, they can put up these big wooden things. Anyway, that's just my thing, so to speak. And let's see, um, 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 we had an advisory committee. I know you don't have a lot of time on this, but it might help I just to throw that out there. And then I'm not sure what to say about the fire problem. I live up in the Cascades, I'm on 310 Cypress. And when you think about the fires, the Northern fires and how some of those people could not get out. They just could not get out. And I'm hoping with more mapping and evacuation plans in town and getting these NRGs up, I will feel better about that. But anyway, I really want to hope we can come to some kind of conclusion to help these businesses because they really, they need, I think we need to move quickly on this. And, and like um, Bruce said, we can move things around. We, you know, we try it for 60 days. You know, don't spend a lot of money up front in the beginning maybe until we figure it all out. So thank you much. All right, thank you so much, Pam. Uh, next speaker, please. Kathleen Carroll. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, hi Kathleen. Hi, this is Kathleen. My husband and I own the potting shed on Bolinas Road. Mm -hmm. And um, Gosh, first of all, I'm just so grateful for all of you and for John for all of this hard work. And I am so grateful to live in a town. I mean, we have survived. My husband and I bought the potting shed 12 years ago, and we have survived solely because of this wonderful community and people having such, um, such an ethic about supporting local businesses. So I also live in Cascade Canyon, and I'm very aware of the fire danger evacuation fears. I've had plenty of those scary thoughts in my head. <laughs> and, um, but I also have to say, I feel like there has to be a balance. There has to be a balance. Ooh, Kathleen, we lost you. Can you hear me? <clears throat> Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. I, I live in Cascade Canyon, so I understand the fire fears, um, but I feel like there has to be a way to balance that out. So I'm wondering, first of all, as, a, as the retail shop, as we have it right now, we will not survive. We're barely surviving right now since this started. We will not survive if I can't put merchandise out on the street or have some way of people being able to see what we have in front of the shop. I, I can't let people in the shop, obviously, it's just too small. So I'm imagining based on everything I've heard, um, I love the shoplet idea. I also think with the fire danger in mind, perhaps all everything would have to be like on wheels, like it would like, I would do whatever I had to do to make sure I could set up something that was beautiful, um, engaging and totally safe for people to browse and shop both for my employees sake and for the community's sake um, but then maybe have it on wheels and have some sort of requirement that it can be easily moved to the side if there were god forbid some big emergency um, another thought along those lines is I liked the idea I think this was one of the things that John said of having Bolinas could be a, a, a two-lane one-way heading out so that 
for evacuation, all the people from Cascade Canyon and Deer Park could, so maybe like a two lane one way just from Elsie Lane to Broadway, just that, that one block where you still have the Elsie Lane to the side. <clears throat> and lastly, I would just totally trust a fire marshal and a street planner to kind of figure all that out. Um, yeah, because I'm not a street planner. But thank you so much. That's it. Thank you, Kathleen, very much. Uh, next speaker, please. Can I, can I just take one second? So we have 19 hands raised, as I see on my screen, and we are supposed to end officially at eight. So I would like to see a show of hands from council of who's able to wait out another 45 minutes after, because we won't get there. And I think we need a little bit of a wrap up to let people know what next steps are. Everybody cool? Can you raise your hand? Yes, if you are, Bruce. Okay, so let's just continue then. And public, I'm sorry that this is going longer, but I think it's absolutely vital and I very appreciate all the public participation. So um, next speaker. It's Jody Timms. Oh, hi, Jody. Good evening, council members and John. Oh my gosh, I so appreciate your volunteer time. John, you have obviously a lot of expertise and we need a lot of volunteers in town. So I really appreciate um, all your effort. Thank you very, very much. Uh, I found the whole presentation just absolutely fascinating. I love the whole conversation. I think it's very important for us to be as creative and thinking outside of the box as we possibly can and as quickly as we can. Our businesses are just key to our town. And so I'm really happy to hear all these ideas. Uh, I love the temporary nature of everything. I think we really should try some of these ideas of uh, setting things up uh, short term um, on Broadway, painting the roads, whatever, and see what works to really try this and try that and try something else. Um, I'm trying to eat out at least <laughs> every other day practically to support our businesses. And uh, I think we all really obviously want our town to thrive. So I also really want to thank, thank you, John, and everyone's uh, concern about older adults and mobility issues and ADA issues. Um, those are obviously really important, as well as younger folks with strollers and, um, and everybody who needs good access and safety and, and, and obviously um, protection around the coronavirus. That's very, very important. I just love to see more walking and biking in town. Um, uh, again, older adults really do want and need to get out, and uh, we need to be able to do that really safely. So, I again, I just love all these ideas. I think we should try the less expensive, low-end, temporary, flexible ideas first as much as we can, and then just go from there. So, I think that's all my thoughts. Thank you very, very much, everybody. Thank you, Jody. Okay, uh, next speaker. Jennifer Hammond. Hello, Council. Good evening. Um, thank you all so much for for this chance for the community to to weigh in on on so how Fairfax moves forward. And it's very exciting to hear all these ideas and and all and so many community members um, engaged in the process. Um, and thanks to John for that fabulous presentation. And I just echo a lot of things that have already been said. Um, I love the prior caller who said, you know, think big and act small. And I think the, the you know, least expensive options um, in sort of like thinking in, in terms of shoplets, making sure that we have, we have, we do it safely. And I think we need to really have the fire marshal weigh in on those issues. Um, but I think there probably is a way to have the shoplets so that Kathleen can bring her, you know, goods out into the street for the potting shed and all the other businesses as well. Um, I, I, you know, that as far as the, the, um, the two one ways out of town, I think that's something to really look at the two egresses for evacuation purposes. If that ever, if, it, if that ever happens, um, I'd be very curious to see what the fire, fire marshal thought about that. Um, and utilizing our other public spaces, like Larry discussed, um, I think we should look at those options as well. That makes a whole lot of sense. Um, but certainly we need to bring our businesses outside. Um, and I'm very concerned about them. I'm very concerned about downtown Fairfax and also the businesses on Broadway and um, Sir Francis Drake as well. 
Um, so we really need to come together as a community and, and you know, think big and act small and, and, and really support our entire community. Um, I did have a question about um, this is something that I've been personally wondering about. I think some time ago, maybe it was Fauci said that he wasn't as concerned about the six foot distancing if you're just like walking by someone, that it was more of if you're in one space for a longer period of time, especially if you have a mask, if everybody has, has masks on, you know, is it in terms of sidewalks and people moving by each other, is it, um, is it a big concern um, to be within the six feet, you know, range? So that's just a question I had that I'd like an answer to. Maybe Matt Willis is somebody to consult with about that. Anyway, thanks all. And I'll let the next speakers go, go forward and uh, let's keep up the good work. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Um, next speaker, please. Next speaker is Kelly London. Hello. Hmm. I'm Kelly London with the Coffee Roastery. Oh, hi, Kelly. Hi. Yeah, um, I want to thank the council and John for the uh, fabulous, concise presentation. All Fairfax businesses are slowly going out. Fairfax survival depends on solutions. Simple solutions, not tying our hands. Rules of seating, ours won't work. We are so stressed. Fire in roadways, listen to the experts, not the hysteria. Bars need to be included in retail in all this. And here's my wife, Deborah. Hi, Deborah London. We live in Hillside Drive in Fairfax. We own the coffee roastery on the corner. So I love this great idea, fabulous. As you, a lot of you know, we, we did a preliminary proposal of exactly this about a year ago. And um, I, I love this idea, whether it's the parklet or the in-street thing. It can absolutely work. We are suffering. It, it must be a temporary permanent situation. We can't be lugging tables and chairs and stuff inside and outside every four hours. That's insanity. You'll just push the restaurateurs over the edge with that. And everybody. And, and everybody else, and um, th this, we can't do that. So we can't have designated days, like somebody here and somebody there, and then it, it's not just not gonna be fair, and it doesn't constitute a feeling of consistency in the town, of uniformity, of something people can look forward to. Hmm, who's open today? Oh, well, I, you know, that's, it's just not gonna work. It's everybody, every day. And I, I believe we can work something out with the, fa the traffic. That's absolutely doable. I'm totally willing to participate. We'll do a parklet. We'll do we'll do the shoplet we're in, and we'll help in any way we can. I would love, of course, to see this morph into some kind of permanent thing for at least those people who are interested. I think that the that the uh, proven positive statistics they exist. John's told us about them. I think we need to listen to that, whether we're a town of 750 people or 75,000 people, there's a way forward that we can do that. Belen you know, with Bellinas is plenty wide enough. There's many ways to make the traffic go, go on. But, and also I believe this whole discussion about Bellinas Road is never over. It's gonna come up time and time and time again because there needs to be change, some interest. We need to move into the future. Change must happen, it's inevitable. And so I kind of resist this notion that certain individuals have about, well, we've already talked about this, so done off the table. That's not, that's, that's wrong. We're gonna keep talking about this. So I, I really don't want to see this idea condemned by a certain, you know, one specific neighborhood. The reality is we all live on narrow, skinny, dead end streets, a lot of us. So yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm, is that three minutes? Yeah, okay. Up, but done, thank you. Done. Okay. We're in. Love it. Okay. All right. Bye. Um, next speaker, please. Okay. Uh, next is Bjorn Grippenberg. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Bjorn. Good evening. Um, I'm Bjorn Grippenberg, Policy and Planning Director for Marin County Bicycle Coalition, which of course is based in Fairfax. 
Um, just want to start by expressing our gratitude to your council and John for taking this important first step in thinking creatively about how to uh, use your streets during this period. And want to uh, take a moment tonight to encourage you, in addition to considering how to reconfigure your downtown streets, to go a step further by ensuring that everyone feels safe walking and biking downtown to shop and dine, especially given the likelihood of on-street parking removal. Um, John talked about this a little bit, actually, in his presentation when he mentioned slow streets. Right now, cities around the Bay Area and the world are closing neighborhood streets to through traffic, which I should mention does not impede local or emergency access and egress. Um, and there are also a lot of cities that are looking at streets and creating pop-up sidewalks or bikeways at very little cost, and they're doing it quickly and cheaply. Um, John said something that really resonated with me when he said that this pop-up temporary infrastructure is communications first and infrastructure second. And what a great opportunity this is to, for the town to promote walking and biking uh, more regularly. We at MCBC are closely monitoring best practices and we're ready to assist Fairfax however we can. Odds are there are some great projects in your adopted bicycle and pedestrian master plan that could be implemented uh, quickly and easily using uh, uh, materials like signage, paint, and cones. And just want to close by saying as, as kids return to school and adults return to work, we really hope that you will seize this opportunity to keep congestion low, air clean, and people healthy by providing safe, convenient walking and biking routes. Thank you very much for your consideration and thank you for thinking boldly. Thank you, Bjorn. Okay, um, next speaker, please. Next is Lynn Walsh. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, hi Lynn. Hi, so um, I, my name is Lynn Walsh. I live on Dominga Avenue. I wanna thank the town council and thank you to John Bailiff for your presentation. Uh, like I said, I live on Dominga and historically, as you know, we've had issues with cut through traffic as Bolinas Avenue backs up. Um, also, people tend to drive way too fast for um, on our very narrow street as they cut through. So it's been a concern for years. Um, as a resident of downtown, I love the downtown businesses and I really want them to succeed. And I love that you guys are encouraging such um, creative thinking. So thank you for hosting this meeting. So my, con my suggestions are that the town council consider the use of private parking lots. There's a great big lot behind Mas Masa. There's the parkade. There's the parking lot at Iron Springs. That big building that used to be the home of Casa Manana at 85 Bolinas has a giant wraparound, very shady, open parking lot. And it seems like it's always empty. So that's a, another spot. And then also I love the idea of the Park Street Courtyard parking. Uh, I'd like to encourage using our big grassy park where we have the farmer's market. Um, and also using the Bank Street extension. I like the idea of parklets, but only over on Broadway because it's so much wider. I love the low cost option that you presented, John, and all that paint on the street was very cool, very Fairfax. They must have stole the idea from us somewhere. Um, so what I'm asking you tonight though to, is to consider very carefully any changes to Bolinas in any way that impedes or changes traffic flow because of the impacts on the nearby neighborhoods. So um, the proposal of turning Bolinas into a one-way outbound for me is very not workable. Um, we've talked about this before, about people who go inbound at LC to bank to get up into the Cascades and they'd come down Bolinas in a one-way format. But the reality is that people that are coming from the east, like at the end of their day, they're tired, they're driving home, they're not gonna wanna go all the way to LC to bank to get up Bolinas. They're going to want to just cut down Pacheco, up Napa, up Dominga to get to their homes. John, you're a traffic planner and you know that traffic is like water. It finds the easiest path. And so people are going to cut up my street. And so it's um, it's really challenging because I know that that's a proposal that people seem very um, encouraged by, but the reality is it'll impact my neighborhood negatively. And that's not fair. And it's an undue burden on us. So I know you have only have 20 seconds left. I wanna say thank you to everybody for working so hard on this. And I wanna encourage everyone to go to fairfaxopenforbusiness.com forward slash gift dash certificates and go buy a gift card tonight 
and let's give some love to our local businesses. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Lynn. Perfect three minutes there. Um, next speaker, please. Next is Alec. Hi, okay. Alec Shoulder here on 10 Court Lane. Um, and there's much that's been said that I would really just be reiterating. So I, I just wanted to mention that I do have one unique experience here, which is that I uh, actually sat with John on Saturday to uh, take some uh, surveys of the traffic going by uh, at various points in downtown Fairfax. And so I had reason sort of at different points all throughout the day on Saturday to be downtown. Um, and it's simply broken. I mean, it's it's downtown Fairfax is effectively closed if, if you have any concern at all with following social distancing. Uh, or any of these sort of worries about possible uh, transmission of the disease. So we've we've already lost or much of what there is of downtown Fairfax. And I think the effort here needs to really be focused on what can we do to make sure we don't lose the rest of it. Um, the other point that I, I just wanted to, of, of the many excellent points that were, were made, I wanted to uh, chime in on again, is that whatever we're going to do, and, and this also came to me by you know, sitting with John and talking with him uh, as, we, as we sat there doing these surveys, whatever we do first is gonna be wrong. Um, we're, we're not gonna find the solution that fixes COVID for downtown Fairfax. Uh, small as it is, downtown Fairfax is a complicated place uh, and we're gonna get it wrong, but we're gonna learn. So I would, I would like to encourage whatever solutions are, are taken that the decisions be made quickly, um, that they focus on cheap and easily implementable uh, solutions that we all understand that this is temporary um, and that that these sort of uh, predicted changes that will come in traffic well traffic itself has changed radically in Fairfax as a result of this um, so everything has changed we don't know what the solution is going to be we can be pretty confident that our first attempts are not going to get it just right um, so let's let's stay sort of fast and lean on this and, and iterate till we get to something pretty good all right thank you so much Alec and thanks for your hard work on this um, next speaker, please. Uh, next is a telephone caller whose number ends in 843. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hey, um, thanks for taking my call. Um, I guess I'm the only phone caller without a pre-recorded name, but my name is David Ruiz. Uh, my wife and I purchased Tamal, and so the old sleeping lady space. Um, so we've been following, uh, all this stuff very closely as we're just finishing kind of our, um, quote unquote remodel inside. And we're looking to start some to go stuff very shortly here. We're also expecting a child any day. So the two things are kind of on top of one another. Can you still hear me? Yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. Um, I just had a couple notes. I've been listening and taking some kind of random notes, so pardon me if they seem a little bit mixed, but I, I like the idea of um, the temporary fast kind of implement, implementation of uh, each business owner or retail owner being able to manipulate the space in front of their business. Um, you know, we, we spoke about maybe having a bench that we could bring in and out each day, something non-permanent. Um, and easy um, to implement. Um, I think the use of mono lane, which is actually our back patio butts up against it, would be amazing. I mean, it's a one way, fairly quiet um, road that I think could kind of be activated in a way for retail shops or maybe other dining options. Um, and that's kind of, those are, oh, I also wanted to bring up the uh, the parking lot between us and Perry's. Um, someone mentioned earlier, there's a lot of private parking areas too that could be activated. That's definitely one of them. Um, we've kind of been watching over the several months that we've been, you know, fixing the patio and such that that area um, could definitely be, I think, better utilized. It's kind of gone a little bit downhill, um, lots of trash and stuff. And we're kind of trying to, you know, clean up that rear area to make it a second, a secondary entrance, knowing that we have the patio and that it would be like a welcome kind of safe zone for people to pick up food and, and dine and that. So that's kind of my two cents, but I just wanted to thank everybody for their comments and we're super excited to meet everybody, whatever that, whatever the outcome may be. And we're uh, excited to participate and help in any way that we can. 
Thank you so much, John, and welcome to town um, and good luck. All the best to you and your wife and your growing family. Hope to meet you soon. Okay, uh, next speaker, please. Next is uh, Ricky A. Hi, everyone. Um, so um, regarding Bellinas and um, the interesting presentation day was very Bellinas centric and I would encourage as others have spoken to really broaden the thinking beyond only Bellinas uh, and that particular main blo block, the controversial block of Bellinas. And um, most of my views have been expressed around Bellinas by others, but I would just add this much, which is that um, I'm open to exploring things that take up the parking space areas that don't effectively change the width for emergency vehicles. But I'm very opposed to any one-way concepts. And the reason is this, the um, discussion is sort of leaned in the direction of everyone, you know, in the Cascades direction or Rob and I up here in Toyon areas um, getting out. But we're not thinking about a situation where, where other fire and emergency vehicles are coming from other nearby towns because we got something that's so large that it's bigger than just our couple of trucks that are coming off a of park. And so you know, there's going to have to be two-way access. One way just doesn't make sense. And much as I love the vision and the dreaming of a concept of a promenade and pedestrian thoroughfares and these beautiful European things, the problem is we don't have any streets that are parallel to Bolinas. And the closest thing is a section of Dominion, which we just heard from the neighbor there. And I'm suddenly imagining, imagine this scenario. Imagine a, a truck coming from Ross or San Anselmo, and it's zooming down Central and zooming down Broadway, and it's going to, what, make a left onto Pacheco and zigzag around Dominion and come back out Bolinas? That's just not practical. Or swing all the way around the bank and come down the backside for that one block. Uh, I, I wish we had four parallel streets and we could close Bellinas off and do all these beautiful ideas that people have, but it just doesn't make sense. Now, that said, we have parking on both sides right now. And if you want to remove the parking and expand that out, that's a whole different thing. So that's pretty much what, what my thoughts around Bellinas. Uh, I support everyone who has mentioned every other space in town, from the pavilion parking lot, at ball field, pavilion itself, where the farmer's market is, you know, if we can do it one day a week on Wednesdays and there's a setup and a breakdown, we could probably, could we do it six days a week, you know, um, and, and maybe different. I, I heard the business owner that said um, it's not practical, um, you know, to lug stuff around. So I see my time's running out. I have many more things to say, but I'm going to say this much. Talk to all the business owners, not just the restaurants, find out what can possibly work for them and also have ideas that you bring to them because they mean narrow folks and say, well, if it's not this, it's not going to work for me, but they don't know yet until they've tried some things out. So also ask them what they need and what works for them, but also maybe suggest ideas that they could try out. I like the idea of doing the chalk and the paint and those uh, cones and stuff, not building any physical structures yet so that we can try different things out. You could also do an alternate, you know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, this side of the block, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, the other side of the block. And, uh, and just remember, as Holly called in, there's, there's yoga teachers, dance teachers, other things that happen besides uh, shops that sell things and food. Thank you. Thank you so much, Richard. And you know what you're saying really reminds me to make sure that everybody who's listening or who's out there know that you can email us all of your suggestions. We, we really need these. So email us during the next week uh, between now and the council meeting, and I can promise you that we will absolutely read them. So uh, thank you. And now next speaker. Is Lori B. Okay. Can you guys hear us? Yes, can. Yeah, this is Lori and Brian Bruckner from the Lodge in Fairfax, <clears throat> uh, small business owners here in town. I uh, want to thank the council for putting together this meeting. I thought it was fantastic. John, I really loved your presentation, and I love that you had such specific examples from actually walking the town and took the time to, to put those examples into the presentation so we could all kind of conceptualize what you were thinking. Um, a couple quick points, you know, the, the, the downturn in sales for small businesses started in February. So we're basically getting ready to go into the fifth month of this and it's been brutal. And I just can't underscore that enough. I mean, it's real for all of us. Our incomes have fallen substantially and it's not sustainable and we need a real sense of urgency. We need to do something quickly. I was really worried that this presentation was going to have a bunch of grandiose ideas that would require all kinds of planning and 
infrastructure and, and just not be practical on a short-term basis. But I think things like the shoplets make a lot of sense. And I would put forth to the people that are worried about fire and emergency vehicle access that if you take away the parking, there's probably going to be less cars going down Bolinas Avenue, and you're probably going to have even easier uh, fluidity for the emergency vehicles to get down that road. So I, I think that that argument doesn't really hold water. Um, also, the, the examples of, of letting businesses just quickly use their own property to set up shop, to set up tables. That's a no-brainer. It doesn't cost the town anything at all. It could be implemented immediately. So I, I hope that we seriously look at, at doing things that are quick, show a sense of urgency, and, and can be implemented real quick. And that's pretty much all I have to say. Okay. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Brian. Um, and next speaker, please. Uh, next is Ann Altman. Hi, Ann. Oops. Hey everybody, uh, this is uh, this is Mike Altman uh, with uh, Ann Altman, uh, owners of Iron Springs Pub and Brewery. Um, and uh, these, this is amazing. There's a lot of great ideas, um, a lot of really good forward thinking. Um, it uh, it brings up uh, warm fuzzies, um, and I think there's you know there's a serious need that uh, for change. Um, and there's short term uh, ideas and long term. And the thing is, is that Fairfax is a large footprint with all types of businesses in all types of locations with all types of needs. Um, you're never, we're never going to find a solution that is going to fit everybody. Um, so what can we do short term that is going to be able to utilize what we have to, to use, you know, businesses don't have a lot of money to spend on, on new equipment and, 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 and stuff to put outside and being able to just kind of just utilize what they have to work with and um, talking with their neighbors. You know, one of the things that, you know, we do have the ability to have outside here, but as a six foot rule, that doesn't give me a lot of space out here. So we've talked to our neighbors to the right, to the left and utilizing their times and what they need and utilizing the times that we need and realizing at points we're going to, we're going to cross over, but how do we work it out so we can satiate both all businesses needs. And I think neighbors working together to figure out what's best for their spaces. Um, I think it's going to be kind of a, a key point. Um, outdoor seating is, is a lot of challenges. I think it, it creates a great vibrant um, atmosphere, but the heat, the cold, the, uh, the, uh, the elements um, really kind of come into play. And if you don't, get a huge amount of opportunity to utilize outdoor space. So how do we use this time that we have? And it's running out quick. We want to be able to jump in like right away as soon as um, we're able to. And that's sort of the other thing too is yes, they're going to allow things to open up soon, but are we ready to open up? And, you know, what is the safest method to be able to satiate building businesses back up, but not creating a risk factor? So, you know, these are kind of all things to kind of come into play. Um, you have to think about ABC laws, what, the, uh, what uh, uh, making sure that we're staying in line with those. Um, ADA uh, um, uh, needs uh, is, is a big play. Um, you know, can we utilize parking spaces to, um, to uh, reroute pedestrian traffic? So, um, so tables, you know, businesses have to be able to utilize spaces that are close by. You can't have a business that is, um, that has uh, their infrastructure in one spot and then go, you know, 100, you know 500 feet away to try to, um, to try to keep their business um, and be able to service that with, you know, dishes and all that other stuff. And then there's the cleanliness factors, you know, if you're not, if you don't have eye contact and see what happens, you know, how, we, how are these, you know, outdoor seating spaces going to be maintained? Um, so I think, you know, all things to think about. Um, I think Fairfax has a lot of initiative and I, I know that, uh, we'll think of some great short term and then think about this as a long term. Uh, what can we do to make Fairfax a more vibrant uh, um, community? Thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate that. Um, okay, I see six more people with their hands up. So let's move. Let's move on, please, Michelle. Sorry. Sorry. I'm trying, but it just jumped. Okay, Karen Bagley. Yeah. Hi there. Hi. Hi, Kaz. Hi there. Hi. So my name is uh, Kaz Begley. I'm the president of the Fairfax Chamber of Commerce. Um, and I'm also the owner and lead stylist at Fairfax Studio, 31 Bellinas Road, uh, right next to Mas Masa. 
So, wow, what a busy time this has been. While I have not been doing any hair and my business has been closed, I've been very busy working um, on trying to assist businesses with financing and uh, loans put out by the government and standards and procedures. I've uh, been working also with Stephanie and um, Renee on Fairfax Open for Business. So we are really actually, I was hoping that I might hear from more merchants. We, it's pretty easy to visualize how we can assist restaurants with more dining, but I was actually hoping that there might be more merchants on the line to give an idea about how any bringing their wares outside might look for them and how that might feel and how much of a reality is that for them? Are they hiring somebody new just to keep an eye on everything that they're offering out front? So I was hoping if anybody's still listening and they don't get the chance to talk that they might actually email the town to say how that would look. Um, and speaking to what Mike said um also about the proximity, I am wondering what if we allowed the businesses to use the sidewalk and then we took the pedestrians onto a marked pedestrian way on the street? So in other words, we bumped out our sidewalks and we took that established, flat, relatively flat, easy to access, keep an eye on it on your own business, nice and close, um, and that became the business space. I don't know how many people would feel about putting the pedestrians on the street, but if we're talking about putting people on the street to dine, I imagine it's a very similar concept with regard to safety. Um, let's see, what else did I want to say? I'm also wondering why aren't we having a chit chat about using the parkade? That is already secure and off the street and keeps the people safe from moving Sir Francis Drake, Bellinus or Broadway, it's, it's, it's an isolated area there and it seems like it was a missed opportunity cr to create a downtown piazza. Um, so I'm wondering if we took a portion of that space and made that where you could go and sit outside while basically you get a to-go meal from a restaurant and you go sit in a public area to eat it. Um, so we could have more tables available for more restaurants. I don't know how you would manage it or keep it clean or tidy or any of those things. Um, but the parkade seems like it's a safe place that is not routed for cars already other than for coming in, moving slowly and parking. Kaz, thank you so much. Your time is up, but I appreciate all the hard work and uh, we'll be continuing on with the hard work. Uh, next speaker, please. Shelby, you're up. Thanks, Michelle. Um, thank you, Council, and thank you, John, for all your hard work. I really appreciate all of the brain power that's gone into this, and it's really exciting to see this conversation happening. Um, I think what's really great also is that a lot of the work for this has been done as Barbara had alluded to and Pam alluded to and I think um, even Bruce might have been involved with some of the work on the general plan and a lot of this work is in the general plan. Um, we worked on the circulation element and the town center element and uh, there's a lot of existing um, good work that's been done. We consulted with the fire department, we had a traffic study done, we looked at evacuation routes, um, and it is doable. It, there was no specific solution proposed because that's not the point of the general plan. It was to look at how do we allow for these redundancies and these iterations. And um, there are redundant um, routes out of town. Bellinus is already substandard and so to say that we're relying on Bellinus as our major evacuation route is a little bit um, not so. We have um, starting with, Fr you can go up Frostuck, you can go up Park, you can go Elsie Bank, you can go Creek, you can go Sherman, you can go Dominga. There's, there's, there are um, evacuation routes that are laid out and shown for many people to get out at one time. Um, and none of this would happen if the fire department decided it was a bad idea. So 
um, it's almost a moot point in that, of course, that's going to be the first consideration. And then some of these layers of multiple uses are so exciting to hear people talk about to use the ball field. Maybe it's a, you know, a different kind of farmer's market that we do on a once a week basis for all the merchants to set up or um, allow for some of these interstitial spaces to get used as people need them and to reduce our permitting um, stringency to to allow for that to happen but it's going to take more than one solution and just opposing to begin with is um, counterproductive and I think our flexibility and our agility here at this moment like tomorrow let's get the chalk out and make something happen um, is going to make it the successful downtown that we have been really talking about for a long time and and we are able to do we know we can do it um so i think we need to spread out the impacts and um take a little for the team sometimes but um i think it's a really important time to take advantage of the fact that we are agile and we have a lot of foundation in place that will help us get there thanks Thank you, Shelby. Much appreciated and all your time as a planning commissioner. Maybe we could get you back. Uh, next speaker, please. Next is Rick H. Hello, um, time out. Uh, Rick Hamer, Fairfax. Um, I'd like uh, to, for the council's consideration for doing things that can be executed quickly uh, on the top of the list, I really like the idea of changing the time of the duration of parking on these principal through fares to shorten it, like Deanna had said. Uh, the parking up on Bank Street and uh, Elsie, uh, it's basically empty uh, most of the day and uh, the parking in front uh, would be better utilized for picking up and dropping off. I also like the idea of the um, uh, just painting the, the uh, uh, I don't like the idea of the parklets uh, because it requires much more investment. And I think that the level playing field uh, and not making people with or businesses with deep pockets get an unfair advantage over those who have been stressed for now five months or will be going on five months. Um, and so the, uh, the um, uh, uh, shoplet zones uh, seem to be a good solution where even after this whole thing, um, they're, it's colorful, right? So... Uh, another thing that I think uh, I'd like to emphasize is that we need to, or the town council needs to consider repealing many of the, or temporary repealing the ordinances which require that no uh, business is conducted outside. Um, right now, many uh, uh, businesses are restricted to a, co a conditional use permit in order to conduct any business outside. I think that ordinance needs to be uh, 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 re repealed uh, temporarily so that businesses can use parking lots and other spaces. I would also like to, um, in addition that yoga is suffering, uh, I do believe that many other uh, 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 tradespeople are, are suffering, such as live music. Live music, uh, they have no place to play. We have starving musicians. I think that we need to lift the re restrictions to let music at reasonable hours occur outdoors with some type of control, like a decibel alert. We need to draw people outdoors where there's less risk of COVID transmission and not packing them indoors and, and do the so re uh, uh, in compliance of the noise ordinance. I'm very concerned that should businesses have seating for 20 indoors and 10 bonus seats outdoors, that those 10 people that are outdoors are simply going to pack indoors because the service is better, that the conversation is better, or the music is better. And I, I support the idea of many uh, uh, streets are for people, such as on the ball field or on uh, mono lane or even the parkade, uh, maybe over the weekends, every weekend, rotate where it is. Um, I think that's good. And I like wheels and putting stuff away every night. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you, Rick, for all the suggestions. Much appreciated. Uh, next speaker, please. Next is Stacy and Brian. Hello. Hello. 
Great. Hi, um, I'm with Brian Auger. Brian uh, is at, um, he had to actually step away because he had to go to another call um, a while ago, but he's from 33 Hill, right behind the lodge. And uh, we just wanted to join uh, join in and just encourage um, iteration of, of how things might be. Try stuff, try it now, try it fast. Doesn't work out, just change it. You know, it's okay. Um, I just want to encourage the, the, the idea of the person who is just on about having music. Absolutely. It's, it's so sad to me that um, we can no longer say that Fairfax has had live music every night since 1967 or whatever it was before. We can't say that anymore, right? So let's get that going again as soon as possible. That's all. Okay. Thank you so much, Stacy. Appreciate the input. Uh, mm -hmm. Next speaker, we're almost... We're, We've got three more hands up. Oops. Uh, Lori Berliner. Hi, Lori. You are still muted. If you can unmute your own microphone. <gasps> Mute, there we go. Hello, council. I uh, live on hillside and I have a business in San Anselmo and I listened to last night's um, San Anselmo council meeting uh, which was uh, had far less participation so I know that they're talking about a June 19 street closure there and the parklet idea there is um, uh, I'm not sure it's it's um, it's as far along as uh, the parklet idea here I want to express my strong support for the parklet idea, I think the continued viability of our restaurants, our business community, it depends upon it. And I think at, at, at an emergency sort of basis, I think the council is uh, well advised to, to do what it can to, to support uh, these important businesses, which are really part of our way of life here. I did want to make one suggestion, and um, that is this. Uh, I know the town is doing micro grants, and perhaps... Uh, we heard from uh, the potting shed owner, and perhaps she could be um, uh, perhaps a micro grant to her to uh, create uh, movable planters that. Uh, Lori, we lost you. The invoke. Quite lovely. Oh, yes, Lori, we okay. lost about. We lost. Now? Yeah, but we lost oh. the last five seconds. So can you go back? Oh, sorry. So I'm suggesting that the potting should be given a micro grant in order to create um, movable planters. So there's a consistency of design and uh, the plants themselves could reflect the individual business. That'd be a way of supporting uh, that business and her viability as well as um, providing a, a visually stimulating um, experience for those uh, who are comfortable in the new normal of uh, dining outside. So those are my comments. Thanks. Thank you for that creative suggestion. It's awesome. Um, okay, now we have four more hands open, I mean raised. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and take the next speaker, please. Okay, the next speaker is called Call In User 7. And you're the only raised hand with a phone, so um, you're on the phone. You're on. It can't be me. Yeah, now we can. Is that me? Yes. Okay. Hi. Good evening. This is Kathy Flores. I live on Claude Circle. I don't really have too much to add, but I did. I agree with what Mallory and Richard had said. I like the ideas that Larry had about using, um, but what about using the parking area? This is just another in, um, example. Across from Bank Street, you know, there's like maybe six parking spots across from, it used to be Bev's Hair Salon. I don't know what it is now, but there's like six parking areas there. Um, I like the idea that Kaz had um, with tables in the parkade. I'm not sure how that could work, work out with cars and driving through, but bringing your food takeout sort of if you want to eat out you need to eat out bringing your food from the restaurant to the table um i feel that the tables need to be as close to the restaurants as possible like you know the 
the, um, oh God, what's the name of those? Anyway, anyway, um, I feel the tables need to be close to the restaurants as possible. I don't know about you, but if you go out for dinner, I do want my food served hot. And I'm not sure how this can be done unless the tables are sort of close to the restaurant, you know, at the park, if you know, uh, the park, the park, the baseball park. So if someone suggested up there, I'm not sure how that could work, you know, unless it's sandwiches. Um, and then I didn't hear this and I may have missed it. Like what evenings are we talking about serving dinners? Is it Thursday through Saturday? What are the hours? Is it from five to nine? Um, uh, I don't know if we talked about uh, the restaurants on St. Francis Drake, such as the Barefoot Cafe and Lo Cafe Lotus. Um, especially the Barefoot Cafe, I, I don't, they don't have any area. So there's Monable, I'm just throwing this out there. Monable has that large parking area in the back that possibly that could be used. I don't know. And I'm wondering if you, if anyone has spoken to the fire department about, of course, you've already been through this, but about the tables being set out on Bolinas Avenue and what did they say about it? Um, I'd like to thank everyone for putting this together. And that's about it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kathy. Um, all righty, next speaker, please. Next speaker is um, Shelly Hamilton. Hi, everybody, town council members. Hi, Shelly. Hi, thank you all so much. Very lovely to see your faces. And thank you for having this forum. It's fantastic. And I um, wanted to just emphasize what Shelby had said as a former planning commissioner. There is a whole wealth of information that has already been gathered that's available for the public to read in the general plan that I think can form a lot of um, underpinning for a decision that's already there, which is great that you already have all of that information um, pulled together. And I also wanted to just say that <clears throat> there have been just an amazing creative wealth of ideas that I've been hearing um, tonight, which is fantastic and wonderful. It's expected of Fairfax that people are creative and have these great ideas. Um, and I really um, appreciate a lot of them and agree with a lot of them. And what I wanted to encourage you all to do in your decision making process, because most of us, you know, are aware that the future is really unpredictable and it's probably going to come and go in new waves of unpredictability um, where we may have to lock down more and then loosen up again. And we just don't know exactly what's going to happen. So I wanted to encourage you that when you're making this final decision, that your final whatever it is, an ordinance or the way that you make the decision, that you do it kind of like form-based um, planning where you make decisions that allow you enough flexibility to be agile. So you pick a couple of different scenarios or you choose the way of wording your decision that lets you um, be able to be agile and move as the, as the future unfolds um, within appropriate, you know, constraints that you have to do for fire and safety and all of that kind of stuff, but that doesn't lock you into one specific scenario that when the future comes and things change, you have to go all the way back to the drawing board. So I just wanted to encourage you to think about how you go about making this decision and doing it in a way that lets, um, that allows for flexibility and agility to try things out, see how they work, adapt, and try new things, both in terms of how they work for us as a community, but then also how they respond to um, the new future that's gonna come to us in waves. So thank you all so much for your thoughtfulness and thank you to the town of Fairfax and all of the people in Fairfax who are putting out these wonderful ideas. Wow, well, thank you so much, Shelley. Uh, much appreciation. Uh, next speaker, please. Um, so we only have one speaker left, and that is the speaker who couldn't be unmuted. So I'll try one more time for Jamie McMillan. Okay. Uh, if you can unmute your microphone, if you can find it, a little mute button or a microphone icon on your screen, or if you're on the telephone, press star six. Okay. All right. So um, I would like to give one last opportunity if anyone else wants to comment, um, and then we will come to a close. Going, going, gone. 
Okay. Well, that was really a remarkable. No, sorry. No? We had a person raise their hand who's already spoken. Oh, okay. Well, we're going to keep it to this then. And um, I, I can't thank everyone enough. It's a remarkable number of things to consider. Uh, I feel as though we have a lot of work to do, which we will be doing um, during the next uh, week. Um, as we said, when we come back for the council meeting on June 3rd, um, we will be considering more specific policies based on some of the things that you guys shared with us. Um, some of your strong desires, some of the things that you really strongly would like to discourage. Um, and they will be policies that focus on allowing restaurants and retailers to use public areas, such as on-street parking, as well as private parking lots, outdoor areas for such uses as outdoor dining or sidewalk sales and or curbside delivery, as I mentioned. Uh, also really important for you businesses who do have private outdoors, uh, we will be considering very, very closely and carefully and expeditiously allowing temporary use permits over the counter for use of private outdoor spaces. So all of that will be coming next Wednesday. Um, I, again, I want to encourage everyone, I can't encourage you more to send us emails if more things come to mind uh, between now and next week. The staff report with some of staff's recommendations for us to consider will come out Friday night, just as always. It doesn't mean that there's a done deal. That's when we get to then take it to council, open it up again for public comment and consider everything that comes before us. Just to close, I want everyone to know one thing. Nothing is considered without the blessing of fire. Fire marshal, fire chief, fire personnel. It's number one, fundamental to anything we do. Um, and two, nothing comes without public health permission and with the loosening of the orders allowing what, it, what we explore will come only when we're allowed to explore it. This is prep work. This is so that we're ready to, um, you know, come out strong. So um, I love what someone said, and that is think big, act small, agility. And I think multiple people have repeated that, but I think it's a great way for us to end tonight. Um, I want you to know that Fairfax is not alone. We, every city, every town in Marin, and I would say throughout California are considering these things. We know the policies, we know what needs to happen in terms of ADA. The homework is being done quick time. I wanna send a shout out to Ann Altman, who is working with Marin Recovers as part of the restaurant industry group. So she knows all the things that are happening with the county right now to try and, to try and move us uh, to, to get to policies that are going to allow us to do these things. So um, our managers are working incredibly hard. Um, and with that, if any council member would like to make a, a, a brief statement or statement of gratitude. Um, uh, okay. I would like to say thank you again to John. I thought his presentation was fantastic. And for this outpouring of community that came out, I think this is probably unprecedented, maybe not, but this was tremendous show um, this evening. I'm really, really kind of blown away. So thank you everybody who showed up and engaged. There's probably, probably scores more watching on channel 30. Um, and just to reiterate so many of the folks that spoke this evening, I just want to encourage everyone to think about what would be if we did nothing. If we did nothing, it's really a death sentence to our small town that we all love. We all love Fairfax. And for those of us that have been talking to the small business owners on a daily basis, they are hanging on by a thread and we do need to act swiftly. Um, so let's think out of the box and um, thank you Renee for leading us through this and thank you again, John and more to come. Yeah, reiterating my thanks to John and Alec sitting downtown in a hundred degree oh, weather, you. counting cars, counting bikes, watching how people congregate. This is a 100% volunteer effort with absolutely no ongoing obligation for anything except for you. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as we're 
just, just wanted to say I'm a, I'm a new Fairfax resident, but I'm already feeling a really strong sense of pride at the incredible outpouring of creativity and really thoughtful, uh, you know, what, what an amazing creative community to be a part of. And I'm so glad that there seems like there's a strong mandate to take action. So really proud to be here and happy to have, uh, you know, volunteered the time to help support our local businesses. Thank you all. Awesome, John. And then thank you, as always, to Garrett and to Michelle. Michelle for so uh, <laughs> actually moving us through all these wonderful public comments.